Five. And they're going to come on Six. as yep. I call them out? Yep. All right. So everyone's off now, right? Yes. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the table. This is the uh, Are they off? the guest star today. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon is, is not on the show Good. today. This is David Bartlett. Uh, Mark and Elaine are on there. I keep saying they're on their honeymoon, and it kind of is their honeymoon because they're such yeah. a sweet couple. They're so cute and young and fresh in their in their love affair, and uh, they're having a, an anniversary. I believe the forty second anniversary uh, this weekend. So it's forty third actually. Forty third. Forty third yes. this weekend. So I am running, I am uh, filling in for them this evening. I am not Mr. Sci-Fi, but I have a lot of sci-fi background. I've done a lot of sci-fi movies and I've had a, been a fan of the science fiction world and literature and films and television for all of my life since I was 10 probably or younger. And uh, in fact, one of the first two films I ever saw that I remember vividly was Lon Chaney's Phantom of the Opera, which is maybe not science fiction technically, but it's certainly out of the ordinary. So I love the Lord of the Rings and all those things as well. And, Saw Lost in Space on TV when I was 10. Saw Star Trek when I was 10. I mean, it was, you know, it's affected me all my life. So if you're on Mr. Sci-Fi, you want to ask questions of me, you're welcome to do it. I will do my best to answer, and I can certainly give you my opinion. <laughs> um, I am, let me see here. The table is a group of individuals that were formed by Mark and Lane Zickery who are supportive of each other in the, the ways of uh, creativity and art and helping each other network. It's, uh, it has no affiliations of any kind to any uh, racial organizations, any religious organizations, anything that uh, has any kind of a fee. There's no fees to join the table. Once you come to the table once, you're a member for life. You have uh, no other, you don't have to come ever again. And there's no ties to anything for anyone. If you come to the Marie Callender's meeting, when we have them again, if there is a Marie Callender's <laughs> or wherever we end up, then you'll be sitting next to people who are potentially very successful or brand new to the business because there's no real hierarchy of any kind. So Mark and Elaine wanted to start this because they didn't have that group when back in the day. And uh, I was lucky enough to be in with them on this during the second year. So Tom Katzitz isn't with us yet tonight. If he comes on, he will be the only person involved with the table longer than I have that comes regularly. So I've been around that for a long time. I've also worked on um, uh, Space Command with Mark and Elaine for a long time now. I'm one of the producers and I'm doing, among other things, the Ripple Effect episode that's going to happen in four days, I guess, Dave, right? <laughs> so there is that. Um, I am a filmmaker, a teacher, and a human rights activist. I made my first film when I was 10 years old. Um, it was the same year that I saw those two films. I said, well, I want to do this. The story, the oldest actor is nine years old. The story is Frankenstein and the Wolfman get in a fight. Dracula wakes up out of her coffin, the diversity casting, even when I was 10. She comes over, she stops the fight, she puts on a record and everyone dances. And that's basically the same story that I tell to this day, one way or the other. It's like, there's a lot of problems I know, there's wars in the Middle East, I get it. But I don't get it, put on a record. It's very hard to shoot people when you're dancing. So. That's my solution to the world's problems. <laughs> where, there's, case, where there's a will, I, there's a way. Where there's a yes, thank you. It worked so, in it worked in Guardians of the Galaxy. It did, it did. So uh, you know, art imitates life. Let's hope so. So Adam's here with me tonight to to field offers on Mr. Sci-Fi. As I said, uh, he's going to help me coordinate the different buttons that have to be pushed to get this to happen. Uh, I'll tell you something right now. It's what of a different to watch this than it is to run it, but uh, bear with me and I think we'll be okay. So uh, I am going, let me see, if you want to speak, you can raise your hand, I can see you. You can uh, then unmute your mic and be able to say something. If you want to contribute something, I'm totally open to that. It's not a free for all, but I, I like input from people. Um, you can also text things. You can text me and Adam and get our attention that way. I'm paying attention to text to a point, but I'm really mainly going to be looking at you guys. Um, so let's see here. So uh, anything else about me? The teaching. So what have I done as a teacher? I've been a speaker and a moderator at LA Film School, Slam Dance, and the Sherwood Oaks College, amongst others, too. So this is not my first rodeo as far as this goes, although the Zoom is my first time. So that's exciting. Um, I've also been a judge at the Houston and Burbank Film Festivals, and I am a big human rights fan, especially with orphans. And I've been around the world twice volunteering, helping orphans, shooting video and stills doing that. So basically, I'm a filmmaker, and I love teaching and telling stories. 
So if anyone needs any advice about something tonight, if I can pitch and I will, and if not, I can ask other experts who are with us among them. Uh, I've got to see William Garcia is with us. That's awesome. He's an amazing expert. Uh, Dave Edison, also an expert of ours and others too. So let me see what else. I just made a film that's been on YouTube now and it crossed the 500,000 views mark. So I'm very proud of that. It's called I Am the Flag starring Jimmy Weldon and the entire film is just about patriotism. It's not about government, it's not about military, it's not about anything else except the flag itself, which I'm very proud to, uh, to be a part of this country and this country needs a little help right now. So I'm gonna give it as much as I can. So get out and vote, that's all I can say, get out and vote. So now, let me see. Are there is there anybody from overseas or from far away that is very late at night for them? I see one for sure. Let me see here. Who is that there? Louis Louis Shapiro. Are you from? Uh, no, overseas? I'm from L.A. <laughs> You're from L.A. Oh, I, yeah. I made a mistake then. Nobody here. Nobody on right now that's uh, needing to sign off early because of the time. Anybody from New York? Anybody from out of town? No, we're good. Okay, good. Well, let's start with Bob then. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to uh, unmute. Oh, oh, do you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. My name is Robert Pincus. I'm a, I'm a writer. You all know me, I think. I've got a project now I've been working on. It's, I've got a pilot called How I Invented Fake News. It's a comedy, half hour comedy. And I'm just checking in here to see how things are going. Uh, and uh, I'm actually pretty happy with my latest draft and how I'm setting this up. I just don't know what to do with it these days. And uh, I've been working on the pitch and uh, I I've been going to these um, Zoom meetings for variety with in, you know people do working on different shows. There are a lot of them, but they're pretty good. And uh, I made a comment on the side everyone liked, and it's uh, for pitching, we used to have to be good in a room. Now we have to be good on Zoom. <laughs> it's a little different, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a lot different. It's important, though. And I'm, I'm thinking I might get some good lights. You know, they're not expensive, but that's what I'm working out, because I just don't know where it's going to go from here. I've been listening to everyone you know, how they're going to produce, how they're going to write. I just a bunch of comedy writers today I listen to from the big shows. And everyone is slightly confused on how they're going to go. I mean, nobody wants to have the pandemic in their shows, you know. Right. Nobody wants to have face masks. But the good thing is at least not everybody's talking about rom-coms anymore. <laughs> For a while, that's all they were talking about. So anyway, that's the situation I'm in, and uh, it's the way the world is. It sucks. Do you, do you need to help anything? Do you have any questions or anything? Not just now, you know. I just thought I'd tune in and see what's going on, and it's been about three weeks, and so. All right. Well, I, I didn't talk much about my background, but I started out in low-budget films in L.A., worked with Roger Corman, and a production designer. I was a set carpenter named Jim Cameron who's gone on to do quite yeah. a bit of things since then. I actually have the films. <laughs> I got the three films I did with Corman here. This is uh, the James wow. Cameron film that he production designed. And then I did two more. One of them was with uh, Klaus Kinski, which is uh, this one. So I have, it's very rare that I pick up films that I worked on, but I thought I'd collect these because they were unique. So I started working in bigger budget films and sound design and doing films like Total Recall and Pulp Fiction and Speed and some other films like that. And I started doing independent films on my own and I've won over 64 film festival awards now. So I've run the gamut back and forth through all of this as a feature uh, filmmaker. Now, the TV world has been a little bit more new to me. Thanks to Mark, I've been more steeped in that in the last yeah. four years. This COVID thing has turned everything upside down in a certain way. But the truth is, I haven't seen any change in the actual mechanics of how to get things done, not really. The, how you do the day-to-day -day has changed radically, of course. I have one friend who's a filmmaker and um, is a member of the table. His name is James Guineer, and he's starting to shoot on Monday. He was the first person to get Screen Actors Guild approval, and he's gone out of his way to make sure everyone's safe on the set. 
is a retired military medic and a retired EMT on the set full time. And they're getting tested. People wanted and they're doing mass. I'm not going to speak for him. Right. But it's definitely set up correctly. So he's going to film pretty much normally on his film. And then there's, um, you know, our friends in Atlanta who have the compound out there, um, which is incredible. Tyler Perry was yeah. the lockdown method of filmmaking, which I think is brilliant. And the thing is, it's not new for him to do that. He loves to have people come there and live there and stay there while he makes his projects. And now he's got a good reason to do it. So people are doing it. There's a, a lot of shutdown. That's the way you have to do it. Yeah, there's a lot of be people being put on hold for an indefinite amount of time. And there's a lot of people that aren't going to put up with that. And they're going to push through and make it happen anyway. So, you know, you kind of, uh, you have to take it on a case by case basis, you know? William and I have talked about this extensively. And there's some people that are shutting down for a long time. And there's some that can't wait to start shooting, you know, as I said, Monday. So there's a range out there. Right. And uh, I was hoping I, not to make it myself. I don't want to finance it. Uh, it's just, I'm just going to hold off for a bit, I guess. I don't know. Your it's choice. Why not? I would yeah. find other people that are chomping at the bit. I've run across two or three different sets of investors that can't wait to spend their money. Now, that's really? not the kind of thing you hear all the time. No. But it's like they need their money moving because money cannot sit. Well, Everyone I just know yeah. an article. Productions are way down for this TV season. And a lot of them are just saying, forget this season. You know, I'm talking about major networks. I have the article here, but... Uh, okay. Well, the networks are different ready, because they're ready for the 21 season. Yeah, the networks are different because they have a full slate to do for a season that's to start at a certain time and has to air at a certain time. And even that's changing, but the streaming is a whole other scenario. So, you know, people yeah. about the networks and what they're doing, if you want to have that as your career, then you need to follow that. But that's, there's so many other options. So, you know, again, this is an, I see this whole thing as an opportunity. It's really a chance to reinvent the way things are done, at least for the next two or three months. Because once we get back into a rhythm and a groove, like let's say that that uh, you know a cure is found and this is recovering like it should, like we're all expecting it will eventually, two three months, six months, eight months. Koshik shaking his head because he knows better, because <laughs> he's a doctor. It's gonna be a year. But the idea is that sooner or later, not too far in the future, it's going to go back to a normal state, right. and we have an opportunity now to get in on this level fast before it goes back into some kind of routine that puts up the walls that would have all prevented us all from doing what we want. Well, so how would you approach that if you had a show? You, you do just what I said. You, you become Tyler Perry and make your own studio. You become James Gunnier and be the first person to, to look up, you know, to let SAG, uh, have SAG let you shoot. You put it out there in a way that puts you at the cause of your environment. You become in charge of it. And you put yourself out there and make it happen yourself with your friends, with your other people, whatever it is. You run your show. Don't wait for it to come along so you can participate. I mean, it's never been more the case now than that has ever been in, in our career, in our history, in my lifetime. So that, I've always operated that way myself. Here's a perfect opportunity to jump in and do it for everyone anyway. Well, I do have some ideas. I know something about the technical aspect mm -hmm. of... Uh, and green screens and i think with uh, the programs have come along you can i don't know yeah you, the, you have to do the, without so many people on set you know yeah the thing about the programs is this okay they're amazing programs and incredible cameras you still have to know how to use them you yeah, still know. Have to know how to make a film which right. is not the same thing so don't think that buying a green screen setup that's correct is going to help you suddenly make a film when you can't make a film to begin with, you still have to learn that process and experience that process as well. So yes, right. you make things a lot better and faster. And uh, we're going to hear from people tonight that have done exactly that. You know, oh, Mike really? is one of them. I see him there. He's going to talk about this. I'll bet you. I'm going to encourage him to if he's not going to bring it up himself. Because he's been putting it out there himself for a while now to get these things done on his own. Why wouldn't you? I just say jump in. You know, why wait and wonder? Start something. Shoot a one-minute teaser for your film and see what that's like. See if this green screen thing works for you. It's brilliant for some things and it's terrible for others. Yeah, I know. And sometimes you won't know until you try it. I mean, there's, there are people that have green screen backgrounds on them right now and it, it, they look cool for what we're doing, but is it gonna work for a movie or a TV show? So that's up to you. Well, I do have scenes where I know it would work, but then others where I know it won't work. And so- Yeah, so shoot something problem. and get it up there. Well, I, I, that's really starting from scratch because I don't, have a place to shoot. Well, I'd have to get people from the table, you know? 
It's not starting from scratch. Okay. You involve the table. <laughs> huh? If you involve the table people, it's not starting from scratch because everybody at the table's yeah. got a skill set. Yeah, that's true. Okay, that's good advice. I'm thinking. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for coming out. You're welcome. Do we have any Mr. Sci Fi's there yet, Adam? Uh, yes, we do. Um, oh. A uh, question that we had talked about uh, on a, a few weeks ago, actually, from Ziggy, uh, who asks, any info on 3D files for printing Space Command props? We talked about 3D printing uh, Space Command things, uh, which we have a lot of 3D rendered, like, it would just be a matter of putting those in a format that you could send to a 3D printer. We did that once with, with someone who had a very expensive, very cool 3D printer. And he made a couple of models for us. And it was an amazing experience for all of us. It is very slow and not cheap. And these days, I'm not sure how much it's improved. Probably some. Everything improves. But that's not something we've looked in uh, recently to go the into. Que the question is, yeah. not, the question is not printing it ourselves. The question is sending the data, sending the file uh, to people who have 3D printers mm -hmm. as like a perk or something. Oh, huh. We could look into it. I suppose it would depend on the market. If there's enough people that have those printers, it'd be worthwhile. I would definitely look into that. Sounds pretty yeah. modern and, and cool. Mark loves which, that. For a while. Which we do have a uh, we do have a new campaign that's starting shortly. <laughs> so we yeah, might be able to... it. It's yeah. right away. In fact, yeah. this today is going to be launched heavily with the can the convention that we're having for Space Command and the starting of the new campaign. What was that you said about Sunday? <laughs> yeah. Convent a Space Command convention, you say? Because shaking his head. Yes, it is. So we're going to go into that a little bit later. Yeah. And Adam's going to have a little uh, uh, speech about that. But it's very exciting. It's the only one I've ever heard of. Mark's idea to have a convention for Space Command has now evolved into having a convention online on Zoom with uh, an all day event with screenings and people on panels and the whole thing. So we'll talk about that more a little bit later. Yep. So let's go with uh, Ms. Carol, Carol, Carol Field. You're next. Hi, can you hear hey. me? Yes, how are you? Hi, I'm, oh, thank you, God, I'm just fine. I just want this over. I hate not convening because I'm extroverted. I hate not- Recognize your kitchen. <laughs> what, you recognize, oh, that's right, you were here, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're all welcome to come over now or then or something. Um, uh, I didn't prepare anything. I don't know what I, I have going. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Uh, you need me to, um, if you need a fast study or a table read person, I'll be your gal. Um, what, 36, 36 commercials, 20 musicals in New York. So I've, I've been around the block. Um, and I'm doing lots of stuff right now and I'm doing some writing. And there's been interest. Um, and I don't think I have any questions. I just want to tell you how much I look forward to these meetings every week. You kind of, you stabilize me and you keep me um, a sort of sort of energized and a little Twitter-pated about the world. <laughs> right now, because, you know, I mean, I, I mean, God. Um, so I just want to encourage all of you to, to stay creative and stay physically active and um, stay positive. And thank you for being in my life. Thank so. you. So we uh, at the table here have been here every Thursday for 26 years, except for Thanksgiving and the holidays, key holidays. We even have it on Halloween. In fact, Halloween's pretty fun. People tend to uh, dress up, uh, go out of the ordinary to dress up for the table meetings. And to see Mark in a Superman outfit is, that's remarkable. That's worth the presentation <laughs> right there. Last year, Mark and Elaine went as peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Jeez. So <laughs> there you are. All right, good. Uh, any more Mr. Sci-Fi's right now, Adam? Yeah. Yes, uh, we have a new question. Uh, first off, uh, our longtime uh, um, watcher and contributor, Rose Kirby, uh, says hello. Good morning from the UK. Hi, Rose. Um, and our question is from Wilhelm Sowers, mm -hmm. who asks, uh, do you see on location shooting disappearing in favor of CGI scenery? Disappearing. 
personally, no, I don't see anything disappearing. I do see, see things shifting somewhat. The CGI is getting better and better all the time. I still think there's a natural aspect of that that you can't really recreate digitally. Um, Lord of the and Rings. It's, ex it's very expensive, too, to do CGI. <laughs> well, it depends. You know, if you're going to drag a crew out to the middle of the, of the desert to get that magic hour shot, and it's the only thing you shoot all day. You compare that to the cost of the CGI replacement of a similar nature. That's really, you know, uh, the, the, the uh, last Mad Max movie was shot, you know, in the camera on location with 150 vehicles. And uh, Avatar that's being done now is complete CGI live on the set. So there's your gamut, you know, and the cost of those films is probably not that different because that film was very expensive. But well, not that uh, camera films are obviously more, but you know what I'm saying. So I don't think it's going to replace anything. I still think there's going to be an aspect of going out to see a beautiful sunset and shooting an actor or an actress in front of it that you can't get any other way. That's going to be the thing that people prefer to do and see. But at the same time, it's not like CGI is going to trick people into thinking that they're seeing something real to avoid going out and shoot. That's not really the thinking. The thinking is, can we have a studio environment to do most of our shooting and avoid the location expense and then you have it the other way around, having someone who's now completing the construction of a studio. Believe me, I would rather shoot on location half the time. <laughs> but <laughs> studios are great environments to have. And there's certain things you can only do in studios, and there's certain things you can only do on location, in my opinion. So that's my answer to that. And replace it, no. Shift it, possibly. You know. So yeah. there's my answer. And and, and we need uh, we need a vaccine before we really get into full operation live anyway well you could say that about studio shooting too so green screen isn't going to work either yeah no, that's what i'm talking about before we before we can go back to live studios yeah so there you are i'm the eternal optimist i i am the opposite of your i am the opposite of the glass half empty i always find a way to make something happen in my mind because it eventually happens to some greater or lesser degree in the physical universe that's just my experience I, i'm not unique in this environment in this way of thinking. So I would just say that, you know, decide on what you want to have and then go after it. It's that simple. If you have to shoot in green screen, do it and do it the best you can possibly make it happen. And if you have to be on location, do that too. And if you have to shoot during the COVID, make that happen too. But you got to understand there's a lot of games to be played to make that correct. Otherwise, you know, you could have backlash and illnesses and every other horrible thing imaginable. We don't want that. So yeah. there you go. Yes. Bob. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I suggest go to variety.com and they're doing all these streaming of, and you can kind of hear how the showmaker, how people who are the showrunners are doing it right now, if they're doing it. There's all different opinions. It's good to hear all that. They do these streaming things just at variety.com. It's just the magazine. But anyway, that's what I want. Yeah, so. The thing about this time right now is that nobody really knows what's happening. There are things happening. You can track what they are. You can predict what you might want to do yourself. You can also predict what people might be doing soon. But you just got to keep your nose to the ground, your, your nose to the grind and your ear to the ground, to get my metaphors correct here, so that you can follow along and also create your own way. But again, I think this is a, a unique time to create your own world. Because nobody's going to say no at this point. Who would say no? They don't know the difference. Why not have you do something? It sounds like a good idea. You know, Are we going in turn or can I just jump in for a second? Sure. Well, um, so two things. One, I'm actually building a compound here on my property. <laughs> so nice. if anybody wants to come up to Mariposa County near Yosemite, no film permits are required. So oh, that's pretty not great. Want to go there. Wow. <laughs> so thank you for having this because I can actually attend these meetings. Yeah. The other thing um, is, if, speaking of variety, I was just reading this morning how um, uh, podcasts and audio dramas are going crazy right now. So um, I'm actually, I have a quick little ask. If anyone knows anybody at Cadence 13, that company that does the audio dramas and podcasts, please, please let me know because I have two properties that I would like to somehow get to them. Uh, to let them know because they're looking for more content right now and I'm still working on getting an agent. I'm very close. I'm actually in negotiations, but I don't quite have the paperwork mind yet. But uh, so anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So there's other ways of making content with your actors through their voice where they can do it from home, send you a file, you have 
the post-production and voila theater for the ear beautiful Spotify is getting the podcast yeah very good thank you there's so, uh, there's many definitely... actors have their own uh, many actors have their own sound booths now with quality microphones and recording equipment so the files can sound pretty good sometimes I'm, not but i'm doing it right now i've got some uh, audio dramas in the works right now actually yeah and there's a, another table member um uh gosh i can't remember his full name but uh he does um he also, he does full production on audio dramas you can he'll take a script and turn it into an audio drama for you. Great. All right. So a little bit later, I'm going to take a small time to talk about home shooting because a lot of people are doing it. There's a lot of simple things you can do and keep in mind that'll make it be much better and not have to do a trial and error thing to get it there. Um, so let's go to Thane. Mr. Thane Allison. How are you, Thane? There I am. Nice. <laughs> um, greetings, everyone. Uh, SAG after character actor. Um, hi, Koshuk and David. Um, I've gotten bogged down in doing my taxes, but today I finished the feds and started the California and only have the rest of California and then Oregon to do. And then uh, I will have that behind me. Um, <clears throat> along with the wounded warrior here from uh, Jessica Lynn Johnson's writing seminar every morning for 83 days. I got some uh, some form of, it isn't carpal tunnel, but it's another malady that goes with uh, writing by hand on, on paper uh, and uh, for eight minutes a day. At any rate, I'm moving along. Um, I discovered yesterday uh, a documentary film that I have a flash uh, moment in. Uh, just got released um, and is up online. Um, something I do here as a volunteer basis is called Repair Cafe. And it's a group of us who get together uh, at various places, senior centers, libraries, um, community centers. And people bring in uh, small appliances from microwaves to television sets to mix masters. Uh, lamps, um, torn jeans that need patching, uh, a variety of, of problems. And we have uh, about between 30 and 40, uh, quote, experts. I'm known as a tinkerer uh, that do our best to either uh, dissuade them from throwing it away if they get the right part or actually fixing it. And we do, all, do that all for free. And um, it's amazing if you notice in your neighborhood how much stuff run, uh, winds up on the curb because the fuse is blown or the cord has gotten uh, pulled out for some reason or the wire has gotten run over by a, a chair and, and broken. And uh, the items are perfectly good if you spend maybe a dollar on a new cord or uh, or a fuse and uh, a little bit of time. Um, lots of elderly, lots of low income people, but a whole range of people. And uh, I just find it a, does something good for the planet, does something good for me. And people go away very happy knowing that that you know, vintage uh, tape recorder that they have been, that's been sitting on a shelf really only needed a new set of batteries and um, clean up the head and it actually and maybe uh, uh, make sure the buttons all work and all of a sudden their tape recorder is back now who, who uses a tape recorder lots of people still like to have that that tape recorder available um, so it's it's um, it's a fun way to spend a Saturday morning uh, uh, about every two to three months, of course, we've been shut down for COVID, but uh, and give some back to the community. There's one in Burbank uh, that's in startup mode. I've gone over and, and helped with training their volunteers a little bit. And uh, it's an, actually an international organization that started in, uh, in Sweden. 
who a place where they're very sensitive to how much is going in the landfills. And uh, mm -hmm. if you saw that movie uh, a while back, uh, which now I'm blanking on the, the title, but everybody knows, where the robot is the sort of the last remaining um, robot in the on the planet and and trying to um, to survive the piles and piles of junk. Wally. Wally, yeah. And uh, uh, it's a good metaphor. And the reality is, you know, Dave Edison uh, and Dave, uh, uh, our host here, are really good at hanging on to things like that. And um, uh, if uh, you got something that needs a little repair, bring it by and we'll uh, work on it. But it's a lot of fun. I have something. I have a, an old TV that needs to play a video, a DVD or something. I haven't quite got it to do it yet, but I know it's working. Yeah, we got some guys that are really talented on the electronics and I'm more on the mechanical and and uh, carpenter skills. And But I can I can make a light work and, and so on. Instead of paying 35 or 50 bucks to take it down to a lamp store, where they'll do their best to sell you a new one, we can often fix it for nothing. And, um, you know, we tend to save things that we can't fix and then rob parts off of it to put it in. The, in. Uh, thermal fuses in microwaves are famous for going bad. Um, somebody puts a uh, sheet, uh, sheet metal piece in there or a piece of aluminum foil and it, it shorts out the uh, thermal coupler. And, you know, five minutes of soldering and a, a 27 cent uh, thermal coupler and they're back in business instead of throwing it in the-, wow. in the Well, Bain, I gotta say that's one of the most unusual things I've ever heard at the table. <laughs> well, I, it just happened that this film uh, <laughs> popped up yesterday, reminded me of, uh, of what we're about. And uh, I think it's easy to get fixated on how many hours of Netflix we can watch. And uh, the reality is there are things to do with our hands and our brains and our eyes and, and just interact with real people um, who often don't have the resources to, to do these things. Either they, they're not skilled or they don't think in those logical ways or uh, they don't have the tools to do it. And, uh, so is there anything you need? Um, I did have a question about lighting. I, th I think Bob mentioned lights are cheap and so on. And I saw today, I was trying to find the email. I, I uh, dumped it, but I can't find it now. Um, it was three uh, LED lights about, uh, oh, I don't know, eight by 10 uh, on stands for about $169 uh, multicolor. Um, is that what I want? Or I've got a ring light, which doesn't doesn't seem to do the job as well as I'd, I'd like. And it uh, well, seems like the old box lights with all the bulbs takes up a lot of room. Well, what are you doing? It really depends on what you want to have when you're done with your shot. So the way that you get that look <laughs> is what you want to decide first and decide the lighting to get it there. Those LED panels are very powerful and very useful for certain things, especially if you're doing closer shots. Yeah, mostly what I'm doing is auditioning for for roles where they got yeah. people who actually know how to do that. And yeah. as you can see, I've got natural light on my, le on my left uh, mm -hmm. coming in the window and it's dark on my right. Um, and I, so I'm kind of cut in half here. So well, the, this, the standard, uh, uh, you know, typical Hollywood version of lighting for many movies you watch, especially the ones before the 70s, it's called three-point lighting. Where you've got a light that's strong on one side of your face, which is called the key light. It's called the key because it's the strongest light. Then you've got a little bit of fill light on the other side. You see on my hand it makes a little bit more and less. Right. Light. That's the fill side. And then behind, which I don't have right now, is what's called a rim. So one, two, three. And if you do that, you're looking pretty much like you know most hollywood movies and tv shows that aren't going for a, a more uh, sinister or noir look like something like uh Handmaid's tale or anything like that where it's they're not going for three-point lighting a show like that but a typical show would if you're right. for a sitcom you want to have lots of light everywhere so you don't see any shadows or features of any kind 
because it's giving you just the pure performance of the comedy. That's what they want to see. If you're going for something that's more of a dramatic look, you got to have some kind of light on one side of your face and shadow on the other side, because that's the way that vibe is. Now, the trick is with the auditions, because the casting people uh, are going to want to perceive a certain thing, you don't want to go too far with the dramatic lighting because it becomes more about the lighting and less about the audition, and that can work against you. Right, so right. just, you know, study the three-point lighting concept on Google because that there's a lot of good information there to see what that is and try it out with your three LED panels because you've got enough there. The, the dimming of them up and down is very useful. The whole concept of color is a longer study. You've got the daylight color of blue, basically, and the tungsten color of a light bulb of a yellow. You get to choose between the two and these cameras will automatically adjust for that. If you have one or the other colors, it will look white or normal. Like my, I usually look more orange than this and I was tired of it. So I put a blue gel on my light because it takes some of the orange out. So that's a simple way to control color. Those LEDs have a knob on them, but you can do that. Right. So if you keep them all the same color and just go with the shadows and all of that, you're going to be way ahead of the game. You want to blend color temperatures like that. That's a little bit more advanced and you got to watch out for that. So try those LEDs. I'm not a big fan of the ring lights. I think it makes it look a little bit too much like a modeling shoot. But if you want that kind of look, they're perfect for that. So I've even used them because of that at times. So there's no bad lights in my book. You know, there's no good lights either. It's only what you want to have when you're done and how you get it there. So I hope that's helpful. Sure, thanks. But, uh, doing tests. So here's another technical thing. The cell phones that are out there almost all do this. You have a phone up and you have the overall picture and you take your finger and you tap it on the area that you want it to look good good like the face like you tap the face and it goes like this and it makes that face correctly exposed then you hold your finger over that same spot and let it blink for two or three seconds until that little square comes up and goes solid they will stay that way shoot everything that way it will cut together like a piece of cake and that's why i strongly recommend you at least do those two steps with your phones because you'll already be in a direction to make it look really great and we'll have a little lecture on sound a little later but that's enough for the picture of it now. That's the simplicity of it. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Now let's go to, before he's no longer with us, <laughs> Mr. Coker, who is driving in what he tells me is his old Tesla. <clears throat> I don't hear you. I can't hear you. <laughs> Uh-oh. His old Tesla has old sound too. Oh, there he is. All right, we're gonna see if Eric comes back to us. Are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. What's up? <laughs> it got me right at the drive-through. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> I'm just ready to get something. To drink. I want to grab you. But it's all right. Completely. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I'm cool. I'm cool. I just pulled around. Hey, um, again, uh, first of all, thank you for uh, you know hosting the table. I knew you were gonna give us some wisdom. Uh, I definitely see this as an opportunity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm kind of, I was in the same way, like, what do I do? I know I have a new script that's ready to go. Uh, normally, I'm into production myself during the summer. Um, we have had a vehicle, uh, several shows on Amazon. So, you know, we were working to keep that momentum up and then the COVID hit. Uh, but right now, I'm uh, in pre-production. Hopefully, we'll be shooting the end of July early August. So I want to go into production. Uh, I definitely want to talk to you. And I was glad you were hosting the table because I definitely want to do something to make sure my production value goes higher uh, than even the past shows. So it's just, you know, just learning of wisdom and uh, seeking some guidance on that. So I was actually definitely looking for a more, a better producer than myself, someone who give me more vehicles and more, you know, ways of doing it. Uh, but right now we're in the process that we want to shoot a, uh, a one-hour drama, uh, so we want to shoot the pilot for it. Uh, the blessed thing about it is only two locations. <laughs> two locations, the cast, at most is five people, so uh, oh, the great. main three people in the cast. Yeah, so, I mean, it's just perfect for this time to shoot. So I am definitely want to look at the legal aspects of it, too. Uh, I'll probably be opening up my – I'll be sending out my casting calls next week, uh, casting for it. Uh, and I'll probably be doing, you know, a lot of Zoom auditions and things like that. But I'll be asking, you know, just some, you know, the legal legal side and what I can and what we can do and how we can film it, because definitely it's it's a romantic story. So there is some contact involved. Um, but I'm really 
I'm telling you, I, I am, you know, I'm very bold with a lot of stuff, but I'm scared at the same time, too. I'm a little fearful, too, but the honest, I, the honest truth is, you know, it's just what you said in that word. It's an opportunity right now. And the love and the playing field is a little bit leveled for us because a lot of times I can't get to the major studio to do things like that. So we just with this opportunity, I don't want to miss it. And like the other guy said, I don't want to be home watching Netflix when I should be working. So I, I'm definitely going into uh, production. I'll be seeking, I'll be looking out to, you know, uh, see what I can do to find some better producers. I got right past the drive through inside. Um, and uh, that's where I'm at. So I'm about to sh- go on, open a new show. Hopefully we'll be shooting in um, early August, end of July. Um, and that's it. I'm in pre-production right now. That's great. Anything you need? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually uh, I, I am actually looking for a lot of help doing it. I mean, I have a team and we have a team before, but I just have a feeling in this new season, I have to go up a level. I have to come out this. I know where the level that we're at now, I want to go to the next level in this project. Uh, it is a big outreach to go ahead and go to put that whole hour show together. I really want the pilot to be really fire. So uh, I, I'm open to advice and I'm open to looking. So I will probably put it on the table or whatever, just to say, you know, I'm looking for a producer. Uh, maybe I'm looking for someone to go ahead and do the casting uh, for me too. But, um, It'll be very interesting. And I know, uh, like you said, man, this is the opportunity. And I, I, and, and in the midst of a storm, we got to fly higher, not lower. Yeah. So, so let me ask you a question. I'm really- so here's the way I approach things, too. And I've been successful to a point, and, and I'm refining all the time. But I always ask myself, what do you want to have? So you see you want the next level. What does that mean? What is the definition of the word next? And what is the definition of the word oh. level? What is the next level for you that you want to hit? If you know what that is, you can find a way to get there. You can, ask, you can even ask someone who can get there to participate you, pay with you to get to that level. But what is that next level in your mind and then where you want to be? Do you want to use a 4K camera this time? Do you want to have um, really polished post-production this time? Do you want to have uh, better acting, whatever that means, you know? What is that for you so you can actually have a target that you can go after and ask people to help you get to? You always challenge me. <laughs> you make, I, I, I'll be honest with you, dude. You make me want to be better. So that's a, I, it really is fantastic. Seriously. Good. And I'm not just kidding. You know, you good. always good put question. me in the like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. But, uh, no, that's what I need, though, to be honest with you. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it is a, in my head, I, you know, I keep saying it, but you're right. In my head, it don't mean nothing. I you definitely know. want it. There are some things. Yeah. Write it down on a piece of paper. There are some. So you can read it back. To okay. Yourself. You know, that's not what I really mean. I really mean it's more like this. Really get it in writing in front of you on a piece of paper. I like paper and pen. I just do. I like typing too. I've got a lot of typing going on, on my computer and everything. It's fine. But a paper and a pen is to me, it's more visceral. And you write it down, you look at what you wrote, and you ask yourself those questions and go back and forth. So, so you're really clear on what it is you're actually asking other people to help you get. And I'll bet yes. you you're going to find yourself getting there more precisely if you do it that way. Yeah. And so, that gives me something to measure too. It's just, you know, I, there's a couple of people on here that are my good friends and they're nodding their head. It's like, yeah, it's like, how do you make a budget? Are you going to spend $10 or $12? You know, is your catered lunch going to be $20 a head or $15 a head? That's a different catered lunch. How many people? Is it 12 people or 13 people? That's more money. You do it with money. Why not do it with creativity? Why not do it with lighting and acting? Why not do it with your script? It's, they're not that different. You know, you just have to know what it is you really want to have, then you'll be able to go after it. Like you wanted this Tesla, right? Do you have another car in mind? Like maybe you wanted a nicer nope. car? You don't want a nicer car. You want a Tesla. Did you want a car yeah. that was inexpensive? No, because you didn't get one that was inexpensive. You see what I'm saying? You knew exactly what you wanted to have, and you have it. It's the same with your filmmaking. Yes. Right. Yeah, you're definitely right. It's so it's so measurable and so accomplished. Once you put out there, this is what I want and this is what I'm going for. Well, go. yeah, you get what I, I definitely will write it down. But I got know I gotta, especially though know, you pray for this kind of time, and yeah. so now we have it. So now is the time. I definitely I know what I do in pre-production saves me in production. 
So, uh, yeah, once again, thank you. And everybody, hopefully you do know me. I'm Eric Coker, E-R-I-C-C-O-K-E-R. Uh, if you want to reach out or even be part of it, just let me know. Um, Very good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, Adam, we got any more Mr. Sci-Fi's? Yes, they're all piling up. Oh, good. Let's be one. Every time to remind me, okay? <laughs> We've got uh, <laughs> um, our next question is from Rose Kirby, who uh, asks uh, is asking about the time of the convention. Is it six p.m. UK time? Because she's in the UK. Uh, so, to Rose. Uh, I, I can answer this question. Uh, Let's do that. I, I want to do that in 15 minutes from now. We'll do that. We'll, have, we'll answer all of those answer questions. All the questions about the convention and about the new Kickstarter campaign. So uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty late there now. So yeah. is it? Uh, ah, well, now I didn't think of that. You know what? Forget it. Let's just do it right now. Okay. So uh, Adam Sartain. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, as uh, you may or may not know, uh, my name is Adam Sartain, and I am uh, one of the uh, associate producers on Space Command. Uh, as you can see from my background behind me, uh, one of these days I'm going to get a better, cooler background that looks a lot better. Um, so talking about the Space Command convention, as uh, especially for you, uh, Mr. Sci-Fi viewers that are watching uh, live on YouTube right now, uh, the Mr. Sci-Fi, the uh, Space Command convention is going to be an all-day convention, starting at 10 a.m. Pacific time, uh, and that does translate to 6 p.m. Uh, London time. So if you're in the UK, um, like Rose. Uh, it, yes, it is 6 p.m. That's where, when we're going to start airing um, our first pilot episode of Space Command, followed by, um, I'm actually going to get into the actual schedule, which starting at 11 a.m., our very first panel is going to be with, and all of these panels is going to have uh, Mark Zickrey as the host and uh, moderator of the panel. And we'll have me, um, once again, watching uh, like this, watching, looking at the comments on YouTube Live and asking the comments to people like uh, our very first panelist, who is Mira Furlan, uh, whom you may recognize from Lost as the French woman, or uh, also she was on Babylon, uh, Babylon 5 as well. And... Um, yeah, so uh, Mira Ferlin is our first panelist at 11 a.m. Uh, we have not yet uh, confirmed our 11.30 a.m. panelist, but I'm going to say right now, if we do confirm him, it's J.G. Hertzler, um, who's also uh, in uh, Deep Space Nine, um, tons of different, tons of different stuff, uh, who's, and he'll also be in Ripple Effect, uh, 12 p.m., we're going to have a panel with Christina Moses of A Million Little Things. 12.30 um, p.m. is our panel with Robert Picardo and Doug Jones. Um, Robert Picardo, uh, tons of different sci-fi. Uh, uh, Voyager uh, was one of his earliest sci-fi ones. And then, uh, of course, he's also in the Orville, the Orville and countless other things. And then there's Doug Jones. Uh, whom you may know from uh, tons, tons of different um, uh, character actors. Uh, uh, what's the word? Uh, costume. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, he's play. He plays Saru in Star Trek Discovery. Um, he's uh, he was in the shape. Of, he was the monster in the Shape of Water. He played. He was in Hellboy. Uh, tons. He's tons of different stuff. And that panel is at 12:30 p.m. In a few episodes. Specific... He was great in a few episodes of what we do in the shadows. Yes, yes. Uh, you may you may also, if you're a fan of Hocus Pocus, he played uh, what was it, Billy? Billy. The, um, yeah, the corpse. So um, definitely want to tune in for that panel at 12:30 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday. And uh, after that, I believe um, 
I don't have, I only have the panelists schedule, but what? I believe at 1 p.m. Uh, is when we're final, we're premiering Ripple Effects. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong there. Well, they, believe... supposed, they were supposed, weren't we uh, running the, um, the pilot of Space Command prior to that? First. Right. The pilot of Space Command is going to be at 10 a.m. That's going to start ah. kicking all off. So they're not back to back. Do we know what time they're running the, uh, we're going to be running the uh, pilot episode of Mr. Terrific? Um, don't so know what that is. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a different, maybe a different it's a whole different thing, yeah. Different convention. Different yeah. convention. So the idea of this convention is that we're going to start off with the one hour pilot and then have panel members who are involved with that pilot and then run a brand new episode called Ripple Effect, which was shot during the coronavirus and mostly in people's homes with two scenes that were shot prior to that that haven't been released before. And it's a world premiere, almost a two hour episode was shot and posted during this one period. And then there will be panels afterwards talking about that. That's the idea. Yes. We're also launching the campaign for the new Kickstarter is going to be raising money to shoot episode four, which is part two of Forgiveness, which we're building the studio for right now. And I was there all day yesterday and today and for the last few weeks. And believe me, there's uh, there's going to be an actual studio shooting this thing, which would be very exciting. Technically, so we're on Sunday and uh, we're going to get more details, maybe during this table meeting about the panelists and what times they're having all that. We'll come back to that. OK. Yeah. So thank you. Um, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, if we want to jump on to another Mr. Sci-Fi question, I have a non Space Command related one. Let's do that. Uh, this is from Mark Lungo, okay. who asks, uh, what about dead actors being resurrected via CGI, a la James Dean in the forthcoming Vietnam movie, Finding Jack? Yeah, that's been done a couple of times on small levels. I don't know what's going to happen with that. I think that it's going to be a novelty when it happens. I think some people will be interested and some people will be turned off by it. Uh, I might personally think it's a mixed bag for me personally. I don't know if I want to see that, really. It's hard enough to see someone who's just recently passed away in a movie, uh, especially a comedy like John Candy or whatever, when this has happened. So I don't know what the reaction is going to be to that. I don't think it's going to be happening very much. But, uh, you know, the, the way things are going uh, with the technology the way it is, it's, it's difficult to predict, which is part of what's fun about working in this business. You know, you don't want to go knowing exactly what's going to happen. So we'll see. You know, that's what I'd sure like to see about. Tupac again. Tupac, yeah. <laughs> okay, good. Now, let's go to our next person, Javier. Mayol? Mayol, Mayol. is that right? Mayol, yeah. Hello. Mayol. Javier Mayol. How are you? Hi, uh, good. This is uh, my first time here, so I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm enjoying the conversation. I am a filmmaker. Uh, I just uh, have a film on Prime right now called Love and Hostages. Uh, and, a, and a web series that I just finished uh, uh, last year called Hialeah, uh, based on the town in uh, South Florida. And that's on, uh, that's on YouTube and that's on Facebook. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure like every, a lot of us, we had projects that we were working on right before COVID hit. Uh, we I had a film that was already in pre-production. We had the date set uh, uh, end of April. Uh, and then all of a sudden, of course, COVID hit, and, and that pretty much. Uh, are you are you the producer, director, writer? Actor, uh, I'm the I'm the producer and and the co-writer. I was brought in to, to uh, spruce up the script, and then I, I got involved as a as a producer. Uh, and the other films, I'm the producer and writer as well. So I have a I have a partner of mine who's also in LA. He uh, he uh, he he's the director and and my other producing partner. So uh, so right now, obviously with everybody being uh in in their house and everything it's uh, i've taken the time to develop some of the projects i had i already had before all this happened and just working on rewriting scripts and and working on on developing uh i don't know if you can see uh the my background it's uh uh it's a sci it's a sci-fi uh animation that uh that i wrote uh right now we uh you know we found some money to to put together the artwork like that and then we did we did a, a little bit of of um of of animation and 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 storyboarding uh we're trying right now to do a proof of concept slash short film get that in the work so that you know uh, we can then 
uh, try to pitch the entire feature. So, um, so you know, it's 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 tough because obviously no one no one wants to talk about what's going to happen in the next month or two months. So so we're so we're kind of taking day by day and trying to to find people interested in these projects to to move forward. Uh, so, well, the, first, uh, of all, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Glad that you're here. Are you here in LA right now? Not not at the moment. No, I'm in I'm in Miami. I'm usually in LA uh, a lot, but I I live in Miami. Uh huh. I see. And where are you from originally? Are you from Miami? Uh, no, actually Puerto Rico. Oh, cool. Okay, great. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, uh, can, sorry, William Garcia wanted to chime in. Sure. Go ahead, oh, William. Um, How do you know that? I'm getting, uh, first of all, I'm getting some sound. I don't know if everyone hears it, but I hear like a radio announcement. Or is it just me? <laughs> I <laughs> have not heard that, no. Oh, there not. it goes. It cleared. So I wanted to talk to, uh, what, what is it? Javier, Javier. you're, you're Javier. from Hialeah? You, you wrote a... That Hialeah is my hometown. Is it? Yeah, uh, we wrote a six-episode web series called Hialeah Series. Yeah. So, so you you wrote an uh, an episode of a bunch of all those Cubans. Huh? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, six short six episodes, all all under ten minutes. Uh, we had a great premiere, and the city of Hialeah threw a party for us. About nine hundred people showed up to the screening. Uh, we had uh, we had the we had Ossi Areo, who who was the president of Tyler Perry Studios, come down. Uh, Carlos Gomez from Baker and the Beauty came down. Yeah. We had a pretty good uh, premiere, uh, and then we were we were starting to get traction into into selling the 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 web series to make it into a, a, a an actual TV series, and then and then I, I was supposed to go to Atlanta at the end of March, and then and then that kind of fell through. So so uh, hopefully get back up and rolling when, when that happens. So yeah, for, for those of you from Los Angeles, uh, Hialeah is where I was born and raised. Hialeah is like uh, East LA of, of Los Angeles. So, and, but instead of Mexicans over there is Cubans. Yeah. So, and it's the same level of craziness that you have in Hialeah like you do in East LA. Oh, cool. I, I, I like to see it, send me a link. Um, Cause that would be fun. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, nice. absolutely. Great. Do you need anything else? Can we help with anything else? Uh, no, I mean, I, I'd like to, I don't know if anybody knows anybody in animation. I'm, I, this is my first time working on trying to get an animation project. So just kind of kind of working through uh, what what the next steps are going to be. I have an, the, my animation uh, group that, that I'm working with is in Spain, um, but, but they, they're also starting up. They worked uh, some of the people that work there have worked on Marvel films. They worked on uh, on a movie that's coming out on Netflix called Animal Crackers that comes out this month on Netflix. So, so they have the the know how and the talent, but but we're still working on on the how to of moving things forward. Okay, so you're on the table email. Uh, no. Okay, we'll get hooked up on that. Let's uh, let's see here. Who can we have help with that? Our person, our two people that do that. You can write to me. I'll help you do that. Okay. If anyone has questions for me directly too, you can write to me at Dave Films, D A V E F I L M S at hotmail.com. Now I am crazy busy for the next four or five days. But after that, I hopefully I'll be stabilizing a little bit more. So if I don't answer you right away, please forgive me. But uh, I can help you with, you know, I'll help with anything I can. I okay. definitely okay. help you with the table email. Okay, All great, right. excellent. Uh, then one other thing I wanted to yeah. add. So we were talking about the 3D printing, and and we did a little bit of, of some money raising for the animation, and and I, I and we did these. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but oh, wow. so for the characters in in the film, and and honestly, we it was pretty cheap, and and I'm giving advice on on how to do it. Find someone who has a printer and just wants to do something fun and creative, and and the guy did it for us. We just paid for the material. And we pay for the shipping, and and the rest is just time. If he has, if someone has the time to do it, and you you bring him something super special, I'm sure they'll do it. That's great. Thanks a lot. All right, we got another Mr. Sci-Fi, Adam. Yes. Uh, our next question is from Willem Sowers, who uh, has a interesting question uh, on in Space Command. Will the COVID or current Chaz situation? be written into Space Command in a past tense? 
I can only speak for my own opinion about that. Mark and Elaine, of course, the creators and the scripts and whatnot. <clears throat> I'm thinking probably not, at least not that literally. Um, I personally am not so sure how anybody is going to feel about having COVID stories in their films and TV shows for a little while now, since everyone yeah. has been living through it. It's not a new thing anywhere. So I don't know, but I doubt it. Although the idea of pandemics and the idea of those sorts of storylines are definitely possibilities. Uh, we've got, you know, synthetic characters. We've got uh, a ton of characters that have all sorts of diversity casting. There's, uh, Elaine is doing an entire film about the uh, social aspects of the economic systems of this country and whatnot. So those kinds of things are out there in the air. Um, a direct COVID connection, I doubt it. But again, that's not for me to answer. So who is next? What happened to Koshik? Okay, Mr. Mike. Let's hear from Mike. Mike and Jim. <laughs> Can you hear me? A little bit louder. No, can't hear it. Heard you there for a second. No. Ah. Something's wrong with your mic, Mike. <laughs> okay, why don't you fill around it? All right, can, how about that? Ah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're, a little, uh, you're a little too loud there, Mike. Back your mic up. All right, boy. All right. Turn it down. Turn it down. Okay. Hey, Mike Lopez. Um, my uh, cop turned filmmaker, and um, you know, uh, hey Mike, thought, Mike, have you yes. got something else going on back there, like a TV or something? Oh us? yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. how has that? There you go. Thank you. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, um, when this pandemic thing started, and we were all shut up inside, I, I, I got kind of, actually, kind of depressed. Uh, couldn't do anything, couldn't go anywhere. Um, I was beginning to feel like any creativity I wanted to have was being stifled. Uh, a project that I was just about to uh, launch into, now I had to cancel. Um, and then about halfway through, a couple of weeks after it started, a friend of mine said, Mike, just do something and use whatever you got inside your house and just do something. And I started seeing all these um, uh, videos of people doing uh, films, um, you know, through the internet, doing a Zoom meeting and everybody's talking to that because of the pandemic. And you know, I, I thought to myself, you know, my friend's right, I'm gonna do something. So I sat down, I started writing I got uh, half a, half of a novella done already. Nice. Uh, huh? Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice. And and then I decided to make a film. Me and Jim made a movie. It was called The Last Soldier. It's a four minute video. And in fact, as a matter of fact, today we wrapped on a second movie, Jim and I. So. Wow. It's great. It, of course, he's. You want, to, you want to explain who Jim is? Oh, <laughs> uh, James Metropole. He's a longtime table member. Uh, he's a rock and roll photographer. He's toured with the groups. Uh, he, uh, he used to do a lot of headshots for actors on the uh, on the table. Uh, he did uh, had, Janis he Joplin a, and The Doors. Uh, and, the association, uh, Neil Diamond. Association, yeah. Some of these. I think he's cool. got. He's got. A, I think he's got a picture of Jimi Hendrix somewhere in the back. Yeah. I, I don't know. He has a Marlon Brando picture too. These That's pictures. right. At, at Marlon Brando, mm -hmm. and uh, Orson Welles. He's Orson got a, Welles in one of his later pictures. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. He, he told me that um, in this particular picture, Orson Welles was 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 stone drunk when he took the picture, but uh, it still looks good. It still looks good. So anyway, so um, this pandemic and being enclosed in the apartment has really turned into a, uh, uh, a time where I can really be creative. Just, you just do what you, just do, just do it. Just green light yourself, as Mark always says. And you just, you just write four minute uh, films or 
You can write whatever you can, as long as you can do it in your house or in your yard. There's nothing to stop you from doing it. Yeah. Just do That's it. That's great. Do you need anything else? Do you need any help? Sounds like you're doing well. <laughs> well, um, editing is always a problem. Uh, let me give a shout out to Dave Edison. Great guy. He's always there for me when I have a question. And, right back at you. And yes, you, you are correct about editing. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, him and I are genetic twins. You notice. That's we both have glasses and we both have no hair. I see the resemblance. Yes, and I, I'm 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 the 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 the, the more handsome brother. <laughs> okay, good. Anyway, so and, and I'm the one with better vision. <laughs> well, give uh, give Jim a big hug for us. Jim is also an actor in Space Command, by the way. That's right. That's right. I got his uh, headshot right behind me. We have his headshot printed, and he autographed it, and we gave it out as a perk. It was it was, it was yeah. Headshot. It's yeah rare. Yeah, <laughs> you know what's really nice is Jim. Whenever, whenever Jim gets included in something creative, he really, really loves it. He just, he just, it just thrills him. And so, right. so, and like I said, he's in the house with me because I take care of him, you know, twenty four seven. And that's great that you do that. And we just do it. He, he's a lot of fun to work with. He actually is because he's very funny. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think it, but he is. Yeah. Anyway, uh, other than that. Um, I just got to start editing and I'm learning some tricks and stuff like that. I look at the videos on YouTube on how to do uh, the editing hacks and stuff. And if I have a question, I always ask Dave. He's always there. You see Google. It's a great place to go. Great. Yeah. Well, thanks very much. All right, guys. All right, Adam, you got another Mr. Sci-Fi? Yes. Uh, our next question uh, is from Mac Raven. Uh, because uh, you were talking earlier about uh, lighting. So, uh, sorry, this real quick. There we go. Uh, he says, I did a shoot the other day, I had bought the wrong lights. I put pics into a program and was able to simulate the lighting. Do you think I should purchase the correct lighting or just cheat again? I uh, have two schools of thought about that. One is you do whatever works, and the other is you learn the right way to do it. Now, <laughs> the right way can be in air quotes. So the trick is to get the effect you want to have. And I'm going to say that over and over tonight. It's what you want to have. You want to have that look, and you've got it from a paint program that you put in the computer. The Lord of the Rings, in part two and three, were shot raw in the camera and modeled the lighting in post-production the whole way. Now, the cinematographer wasn't too keen about pointing that out because they stopped giving him Oscar nominations and wins <laughs> because he won for the first one, which he well deserved. But the point is that you can get great looks in post if you've got the skills and you've got the gear. You can also get it right to begin with on the set. And I'm a big fan of that because I'm a cinematographer and an editor and I have a visual effects background to a degree, but mostly I produce visual effects with other people really doing the work. So I can't claim really skills there, but I know the difference and what you can and can't get. And believe me, you're much better off getting it in the camera on the set, especially if you use a color corrected monitor on the set with someone who's balancing the camera as you go. Do not use auto exposure and do not use auto color temperature. Those are our white balance, auto white balance. Those are death to the film that gets edited together later because those will be all over the place. Dave Edison's looking at me like, uh-huh because I'm also doing color correction on Space Command. And when you have cameras that shift from shot to shot to shot, it's a nightmare to get them balanced with color correction. So I really strongly recommend that too. I hope this is a good answer to your question. But uh, again, if you get the effects that way and you can do it that way, you should keep doing it that way. And maybe get better at that technique. So you like it even better. So that's my suggestion there. there so. Let me see here. We've got Mr. Koshik is next. Koshik Chattopadhyay, who I not only can pronounce correctly, I can spell as well. How are hey you? Koshik, I'm good. How are you, David? I'm very good. And you? I'm good. I'm good. Good to see you. Yeah, you too. And all my friends. Where's your gloves? Where's your mask? <laughs> <laughs> it's Yeah, it was right here. I just kept it back. <laughs> back of the house. <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, I'm a comedic writer and a comedy actor, and I'm also getting into direction now. I was in a um, LSCC filmmaking class, 
and we had to make three uh, short films for the semester. I made one and then we got into the lockdown. I was, I was actually in the middle of a pre-production for my second one when everything got shut down. <clears throat> and then I eventually decided to drop off from the class because it was just no point of making something at home and then just graduating. So I'm gonna go back to the class next uh, for, for in in fall, and hopefully I can I can make two more short films and then graduate. Um, you need anything right now? Need no, I don't really need anything. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm good, and I'm also I work for Space Command sometimes with David. Oh, yeah. Okay. There is a guy called David. I work with him sometimes. <laughs> we did yeah. something else together sometimes, didn't we? <laughs> Oh, and I uh, during this time, I um, I really like. I think I, I very much enjoyed the pandemic time. I spent a lot of time with my family, which I never get to do with my little daughter. She's just three and a half, and um, I wrote a coronavirus uh, sci-fi comedy screenplay, feature length, and I made a um, quarantine short film. Uh, and I attended a lot of uh, Zoom meetings that William Garcia hosted, and they were very informative and those are great like, meetings. really good. I increased my knowledge a lot. Yeah, we'll talk about that when we get to him, but those seminars he gives are excellent. So we did something else together, Koshik. Right. <laughs> Remind me about that. <laughs> It's a little film called Junk DNA. Oh, that's yes, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's <clears throat> being finished. It's in the right. I, festival and, you know, yeah. I, I wrote a uh, sci-fi comedy <clears throat> called Junk DNA. It's um, about a gene that a scientist discovers, which <clears throat> uh, if, you can t if you turn it on, it can switch a person from uh, unromantic to romantic from being boring to very interesting or vice versa. Um, it's it's a full full on comedy <clears throat> and uh, David was my director. So he directed and me and David, we both uh, co-produced the film. Um, and I found a, a biotechnology lab, a company, uh, one of my friends, he has it. So he let us use the his labs, like he has three or four different labs and he said, you can use the labs for completely for free for two days, Saturday yeah, and Sunday. Incredible location, an un unpriceable location. You could never afford these locations. Yeah, that's <laughs> like each lab we're looking at, I don't know, maybe thousand dollars a day or something. No, they're like, they're 10 grand a day of labs. These okay. labs. They're the real <laughs> thing. They would, with real experiments happening at the same time. Right, right. It's, 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 it's actual biotech lab, biotech yeah. company. Yeah. Yeah. So the film, uh, my, that was my first film that like I made with, with of course with David's help uh, my my goal is to put the film through to different film festivals <clears throat> and see how I can move to get funding for a feature film so I don't know how that will happen but I, I like I got some good knowledge from the meetings I attended with William so um, we are making a, like a plan to apply the, uh, to submit the film to a bunch of comedy specific film festivals. And then we will go and the network with people and see what happens. Yep, very good. Thank you very much. All right, Adam, you got another uh, Mr. Sci-Fi? Um, yeah, uh, another clarification question from Rose Kirby. Um, asking about, uh, can people buy merchandise? Um, will there be highlights on YouTube? Uh, so, uh, on the convention on Sunday, not today, not tomorrow, not Saturday, but Sunday, 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 um, we are going to open up our new Space Command store on our website, spacecommand-theseries.com. And, uh, we have uh, a certain number of items um, available for purchase, such as um, what we got uh, patches, uh, t-shirts. I think we have a wristwatch, it's very and cool. we have those wristwatches. Yes, we have signed posters. We have unsigned posters. We have autographed headshots. There's 
there's quite a few things we have in stock that we can sell immediately and we can offload pre-order things that we're manufacturing. The, the idea of Space Command with perks is one thing, but we also have the store that you can buy items on. And Individually. There's, there's, yeah, there's an interesting idea that a company is waiting for an order, then they create that item and send the order out. So we don't have to have it in stock first, they make it as we go. So you can go on the website and you can find out what these are and that'll be featured during the convention as well. Yes. And Adam's building the website and we're putting that store together and it's already got stuff on it now and it's, it's fun, it's pretty cool. And as for highlights, uh, we're actually, um, the all the interviews and everything that's on the Space Command convention will remain on Mr. Sci-Fi, I believe with the exception of ripple effect is the only thing that won't remain on Mr. Sci-Fi after it's live. Hmm. Everything else will... Uh... Yeah, we're, we're talking about having Ripple Effect have its premiere and then pulling it. Yeah. And then waiting to release it later in a full release and DVDs and whatnot. Yeah, that's not completely decided yet, but that's what we're looking at. Yep. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah. All righty. Next we have Mr. David Goldenholtz. How are you, David? Fellow Davids. David's yeah. all. <laughs> um, so, as some of you know, I do voiceover, I also do field mixing, which is sound. Um, I do some uh, sound editing, not a whole bunch, but my main forte is uh, field mixing. Um, and I uh, recently did a uh, film festival with a few people that unfortunately aren't here right now. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's really all. And I, I do need, um, some work, uh, preferably in voiceover. Um, also a question to Eric over there. Uh, have you already done the whole, uh, self-driving part of your Tesla? Can't hear you, Eric. No, all right. But um, yeah, <laughs> you call him. You just call him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, either, I, did, you know, yeah, I did the self driving. It's amazing. Nice. Um, but either way, yeah, all I really need is uh, some work doing either voiceover or uh, sound. Um, I know it's kind of hard to ask right now to do that, but. I'm sure there's well, somebody out there that needs it. Yeah, the best way to do that with the table is to offer the help that you can give to the group and also say what you need back. Uh, you can send that out to the table email. You can't ask for a job on the table email, but you can certainly let people know what your skill set is and that you can offer your help in areas that, uh, you know, like, I mean, I'm not suggesting this, but I need help with people painting all this week, all this next week. I need a lot of painters. There's a lot of painting to be done in the studio. We're painting some sets painting the studio itself so if anybody wants to help out with space command and uh score brownie points for the future which is going to be right around the corner where we're going to start shooting if you really want to be an actor in space command the best way to do that is to help mark zickery and be in his space long enough and he will write a part for you and i'm not kidding it's happened so many times i can't tell you so that's a good way to do it and people don't take me seriously like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Well, you know, if I do this or whatever, they come up with all kinds of reasons why that's not going to work. And sure enough, they're right. It doesn't work because they don't do it. So that's an example of just helping out and then receiving help back in ways you might not have expected. And that's really a big part of what the table is. So I put it on the table email and keep coming to these meetings and mentioning it to people and volunteer to help me if you feel like it or not. And uh, go from there, you know? Yeah. So, David, are you a voiceover actor too? Um, I've done voiceover acting before. Uh, there's this one thing that some of you may know, some of you may not. Uh, it's called Fallout. It's a video game. Um, I worked out. I worked with Fallout Miami, but because of um, long story short, because of uh, Bethesda, they made another one called Seventy Six. Uh, that kind of destroyed all of. Uh, the gaming industry. And so because of that, uh, they didn't bring Fallout Miami or Fallout Cascadia to life. So I did voiceover for that, but they just kind of dropped it out. 
Um, I've also worked with a school before. It was uh, for a TV show. I did uh, voice acting for that. And there was some monotonous commercial that was just like an in-house type of commercial that I've done. But um, yeah. Pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you. All right. Do you have another Mr. Sci-Fi? Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, I don't know if it's a question, but uh, David Bass is, uh, it's a good discussion topic, I guess, uh, talking about uh, 3D printers. He said, uh, the current 3D printers are the prototypes for the food replicator from Star Trek and other sci-fi shows. Huh. What do you think about that? Uh, sounds good to me. I mean, they came up with that food machine somehow. It right. sounds like that the kind of technology is going in that direction in a way that I can't predict or even understand, but it's certainly happening. I just got a hernia operation by a robot. So, uh, you know, the doctor operated the robot, but it was a seven foot machine that looked like James Cameron designed it. So that just happened to me. Two COVID tests later, I'm good to go. So, <laughs> you know, a food replicator from a 3D printer, why not, you know? We're definitely yeah, living in the future, that. but it's a little further. It's a little further along than it. It took longer than maybe, we thought it would. <laughs> maybe, maybe, you know. Some, some vegetarian meat substitutes have been three D printed. <laughs> yeah, they're already there's there's already some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They already feel that way, huh? All right, good. So let's go with Mr. William Garcia. You're up, William. Hi. Hello. How's it going, David? How's everyone hey. doing? Koshik. Great. How about you? You look terrific. I love your hair. Yeah. yeah. Like hair? Looks like hair. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to get a hair in my life. <laughs> yeah. I, it's been three months. Eventually, I gotta get. I gotta get my wife to cut it, or I have to go somewhere and stuff. So, um, <laughs> and and I want to know, Edison, were you eating uh, ice cream there? I saw you kind of spooning stuff. Yeah, I was polishing ah. off the remnants of a. Uh, Trader Joe's French Ooh. vanilla. Oh. <laughs> did it, did it, did it. See, you oh, don't get this in Marie calendars. You don't get the same thing. It's not the same thing at all. You know. I did not. I did not bring enough for everybody. <laughs> I was. I was watching a meeting, and I was like, "Oh man, I wish I had some ice cream in the house." But sorry. Anyways, for those of you that don't know me, I'm I'm William Garcia. I'm a uh, filmmaker and producer. And I am one of the producers for the number one feature film in the country, Followed. Do you believe that? Wow. I believe it. Congratulations. Five, five days in a row, number one. That's brilliant. <laughs> I'm, I'm blown away. I, I didn't expect that. Um, Which I wanted that to... wasn't even national. I think, I think it was basically like uh, 10 or 15 states. Um, We've been getting a lot of requests, uh, you know, for certain theaters that are open, but right now it's uh, it's at a drive-in theater near you. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, it looks pretty insane uh, when you look at it. And I'm kind of like, wait a minute, is, is this the movie that I just produced? And it's now like number one. And, and I, it was funny, it's like we beat out E.T. Uh, at number eight overall on the, on the numbers. So I saw deadline and I'm like, wait a minute. It's so, so we beat out ET, you know, for playing, um, during this past weekend. So, <laughs> so it's been fun. Um, that's why I've been busy. I haven't been able to, um, you know, to have one of my uh, free talks and, and seminars is I've been busy with the distributor and the producers, uh, you know, marketing, uh, the movie, even though we've hired a, publicists and you know we have PNA and all that kind of stuff I just so, wanted to uh, I wanted to give you uh, a word of praise on, on those because I attended uh, your last one on followed which oh, yeah. was really great and uh, uh, a little blast from the past because I actually know Matt Brubaker do you really he, Matt, yes. we were in college band together <laughs> of all wow. things and i was in his sh first short film yeah which was a, a horror film about um a um uh gosh what's it a water tower coming to life 
<laughs> you, you know that um, that Matt was Robert Zemeckis is one of his assistants for a while. I don't know if you knew that or not. I didn't yeah, know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and followed though is his first feature. Um, and I was the producer, line producer uh, for the movie, which we shot. It's been a long time. It's it was in uh, about like two and a half years ago, about three, almost three years, three years ago. Um, so we're riding uh, the wave until it lands on the beach. So right now I'm on the wave. We have no idea. Uh, eventually it'll land. It always does. Uh, I'm in development of numerous projects. I've been up all night because I'm attending the Cannes Online Film Festival. Um, that's been a very interesting experience. For those of you that are always like, I'm looking for money, I need a producer, I have this project. Well, I've been talking to people from all over the world. Um, they're online. Uh, it was pretty, pretty inexpensive. It's over. T tonight is the, is the last night. Um, and I've been able to contact quite, quite a few uh, executive producers uh, and some other individuals that might we might be able to do some some business together. So I've been networking on that and then um, st still writing my scripts, my novel, um, busy with followed and and that's pretty much it. Um, it's been very busy and um, I hope it slows down. Um, I have no idea when I'm gonna shoot my next movie. I'm, we're supposedly scheduled for, October, but, um, I'll, and I'll share this with you, uh, we've been having problems casting our film and, and we have funding, it's, it's a $10 million movie. We've been having issues casting the movie uh, with certain actors that we'd like to secure because quite a bit of few actors are just gonna sit it out until COVID is over. And we're talking until a vaccine is, is developed and, in, wow. you know, and available. Wow. Now that's not everyone, obviously. That's not gonna be for every single picture. Um, I do know the Batman uh, with um, Zoe Kravitz and um, Patterson is, is starting to shoot in the UK. Um, and there's quite a few countries in, in Europe that are opening up to shoot. But here's the kicker. Um, they don't want Americans traveling to Europe. So, uh, right now, the borders are closed for Americans. I don't know if you know this or not, but we are the epic center of the world right now. It is spreading right. like wildfire here. So the for specific, well, I won't go into why, I think. Let's not go in there into politics. But unfortunately, we're in a very bad situation when it comes to the rest of the world because of how we're dealing with this. And um, we have no idea when we're gonna start shooting here. Um, yes, the union passed the white paper and the guidelines, uh, but there's a lot of restrictions. Um, just don't know how you would shoot a movie under those guidelines. So um, it's a sit and wait for right now. Um, um, there are some opportunities though I'd like to share with you that um, I have a feature film in post-production and if you have anything that's in post-production, now is the time to start reaching out to, um, to actual buyers because they're, they're starving. All the streamers are looking for new content uh, and that's where you will be able to sell some of your, your, your work um, because they're completely shut down and they've been shut down for what, three months now uh, and they wanna keep the the subscribers uh, watching. So, so they're looking for content. That's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, be more than happy to answer. And thanks, Dave, um, for hanging out. And, Thank you. And hosting today and hope everyone is doing well. All right, thanks very much. Cool. Hey, William, are we gonna have more uh, Zoom meetings in future? I, I know that there, everyone loves it. It's free, um, you know, and I've gotten a lot of response. And, and, and let me make this comment really quick is that um, some of the individuals that I've had are really at high level. Like for example, Paul Brett, he was the executive producer of a you know, King speech. He's like an Academy Award winning producer. He actually gave his email and information to the people that attended that event. 
but I can't share it to everyone. So that's something like if you don't, if you can't attend these free events, I can't share their information if you hear about it. Cause I received like, we're talking dozens of like, Hey, I heard this guy gave his information. I go, yeah, but he only gave it to those people that were there. So, but to answer your question, I'm not sure because I'm so busy with everything that's going on. Um, I'll try to see what other guests that I can have. The last guest I had was, um, uh, I was Justine and Susan who are like uh, television casting agents and uh, casting directors, I mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to, to do another one, but it's, it's gonna be a little difficult because I'm so busy. Okay. Yeah, I saw that one. That was a great one. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. All right, Adam, we got any more of Mr. Sapphires? Uh, yeah, our next uh, question is another one from Wilhelm Sowers, Wilhelm, who asks, uh, uh, anyone remember Robert Picardo in Legend, the unicorn movie in the early 80s, which I do. Do you? I never saw Legend, and I am remiss because I like that kind of film. It was an odd timing. I forget why I ended up not seeing that, but it was a time when I was seeing all the films that were out. And, and I'm a big fan of, you know, a, a lot of people involved with that film. And I still, I have it on my shelf. There's a lot love. of great people in that movie, including Tim Curry as the devil. Yep. <laughs> yep. You've got uh, Tom Cruise, Dark a young, Tom young, Cruise, Tom, young Cruise. Tom Cruise. And yeah, Robert the, Picardo, you know? which you wouldn't recognize because he's completely covered. I um, He I, was a, a witch, wasn't he? Yes. He was the witch in the in the bog, like a bog witch or something. And it, I did not know that was Robert Picardo until recently. Um, I, I knew it before today, but I was looking up photos of him and saw that picture and was like, oh, my God, that was Robert Picardo. Yeah, that's so, a trip. Yeah, one of the, the there's a little person in that movie called Billy Barty. Billy Barty was a legendary um uh performer of that type and i got to work with him once the first film i ever worked on in la was a film called under the rainbow which is a true story based on a true story of uh when the the midgets and the dwarves as they were called at the time got together for the wizard of oz and they all stayed in one hotel and they all kind of went crazy because they'd never seen so many people like them in one place which is a true story I love that movie was, i re totally remember that movie is oh that my right God. That, well, that yes was, that i loved the, it the first Hollywood set I was ever on was on that show, and it was the biggest film being shot at the time. I met Chevy Chase, I met Carrie Fisher, and Star Wars Carrie Fisher. I was couldn't believe it, and and Billy Barty and Cork Hubbard were in it, and it was an incredible experience. And then he was in that too. But that was uh, <laughs> they were also those two also played the uh, the strange little uh, robots in Blade Runner, in the guy's workshop. They played that too. Anyway, so yeah, really Scott. He's my guy, and I still haven't seen Legend, so I'm gonna watch it now. Thanks to that that person who said that. Who I recommend that? it. Who said it? Uh, Willem Sowers. I'm Willem. gonna I'm gonna out David Bartlett on something oh, that beautiful. I that I really envy him for. <laughs> he, apparently, he's never seen Spaceballs. What? And I, and I wish I had. Big Mel Brooks fan. Big. And I still haven't seen Spaceballs. It's true. Horrible. Horrible. Horrible on a good day. Shame, shame. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll get together someday and watch that, uh, Dave, just so you can remind me how bad it is. Okay, good. So oh, who do we have here next? Mark. I think, we'll, I think William yeah. had a... Uh, really, really oh. quick. So, so Sarah C. is calling me out. She's saying that, oops, um, uh, congrats. I doubt you beat out E.T., but that's okay. Can I share my screen really quick? I want to show you something. Uh, <laughs> you should I don't do lie. It. Yeah, you should be able to share screen. Okay, folks. Uh, it still says host disabled attendees sharing. What? Mm -hmm. I think we can't do that. Oh, ah, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Go ahead. Try. Somebody is calling me out. <laughs> I never lie. I don't make things <laughs> up. Right there, back to the future. Future, number six, number seven followed, then E.T. Uh, <laughs> I do not lie, this is from Deadline. Awesome. 
just barely, but he did, but you did it. <laughs> but I did it barely, but I did it. He sold out all three drive-ins in California. That's right. That's it. <laughs> awesome. There awesome. you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So Mark, you're up. Mark Agashevitz. Oh man, butcher my last name. That's why Isn't I don't it? generally say it. Yes. Tell me it's how to say it then. It's Ogushowitz. Oh, jeez. There's no V in oh, there. Gush. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. I'll never that, forget now. I'm sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, most people do it. Although the first time Mark ever, Mark Zickri ever said it, he got it right. So, huh. wow. you know, it happens. Anyway, uh, my name's Mark. I don't generally say my last name because of that. Um, but uh, I'm an editor. I'm a filmmaker. Uh, working on a short film. I see Earl's here. He's waiting to get the uh, stuff so that he can do the music and sound on it. And he'll probably have that on Monday or Tuesday because I got the uh, I got the final shot or the first graphic shot, uh, blood shot that I needed in order to lock the picture. Um, I just won't have a chance to put it in till Monday because I've been incredibly busy working on uh, paid gigs, like this thing that uh, Dave Edison recommended me over to for Yosemite. They're keeping me busy. And uh, a couple of clients who feel that because uh, nobody's, they think nobody's working right now, that I'm just sitting at home doing nothing. And they're like, I need it tomorrow. I need it tomorrow. It's like, well, I'm busy. Um, and then of course, I'm doing a podcast with, uh, with Nathan. And I've been spending all week on the phone with him when I was supposed to be editing the podcast. I was spending all week on the phone with him, dealing with trying to figure out how to make a, a, a website and also all the technical stuff that lives in and Apple and all that uh, I have to deal with in order to get this thing up. Our first interview is with Mark Sikri, which is pretty much edited. I just have to listen to it through once tonight to make sure it is. Um, and uh, I don't know. I think that's about it. Wait a minute. I think you work with my husband, Mark, because um, he works for the Yosemite Mariposa County Tourism Bureau. Craig? Yes, that's my husband. <laughs> yeah, well. Thank you, Dave I mean, Edison. You're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Craig, I guess he's, he's the one shooting the videos and all that, or at least the footage that he's been sending. Yeah, him and Yosemite. Tony, yeah. 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 So they've been keeping me kind of busy. I've been doing like one video a week from the last one was actually rather easy. I've been dealing mostly with Ellen though. Um, but she was really sick. Um, she thought she had COVID, but that turned out to be a, that it was not that it was just a regular sickness. So, uh, but yeah, he's been sending me all these videos and, uh, I've been edit. I'm the one editing them together. So when you see the videos, you can put a face to the edit. Yeah, this is great because I get to see all the initial edits because he's working at home, right? So I like walk 20 feet and go, "Hey, here's the new thing Mark just did." I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> Hello. And then you look at it and say, "Oh my God, that sucks." Oh. No, I don't either. <laughs> no, actually, it's it's been a pretty easy experience because the most I've done is two cuts for them, and then they're happy. Um, this last one, it was only going to be one cut, but then they decided to swap something out with the logo. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's, it's been a pretty good experience up there. I'm just hoping that I'm being told that they might be closing down again. So no. oh, oh. wait, Yosemite park or yeah, Yosemite. Yeah. Well, that doesn't matter because, um, the, the, the County <laughs> Tourism Bureau is, it's represents the entire oh. Maricopa County. All so we want to cover care. things at the museum and, and other stuff. Not I say right. we like I'm part of it. I'm not, but I mean I feel like I am because it's in my house. So, right. <laughs> but all the, uh, you're doing a fine job. Keep up. All, all these people <laughs> they don't they don't care. They're like move on to the next Sorry. person. Uh, right. No, but yeah, nice nice to meet you. Yeah, I've been working with Craig. So, um, but that's been a fun experience because uh, I used to do tra a travel show way back, and so this is kind of like doing the same thing except for in one minute increments. So uh, anyway, that's me. Very cool. So the table you, works, everyone. Yay. Oh, and, what, and one last thing. I just wanted to thank David because a couple of weeks ago, you gave me some advice on how to organize my schedule. And I've kind, uh, of, I've kind of crossed what you said with what Mark said, and it's been working pretty well for me. So great. So thanks. Thanks for that advice. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yeah, it's, I, I have a friend. I'm obsessed with, with organization. I have a friend who's a Navy SEAL. He's one of only 12 Navy SEALs in the entire military. 
that was at a high enough level to go and, and, and supervise the simulation of a nuclear disasters and things on the, the, the different uh, ships and whatnot. He's a very high rarefied kind of guy. I have a lot of admiration for him. He's super smart. And he said that I was the most organized person he'd ever met. <laughs> so I'm not sure that's a good thing or not. But uh, yeah, if you need stuff organized, you should call me because I love doing it. So anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I was in a very messed up situation because this podcast is actually, after the first episode, everything's going to probably fall into place and be really easy. But this first one, because we're getting all the website up and this up and that up and learning Libsyn, it just, it took over my life. And so I really needed advice yeah. on how to organize. And you and Mark really came through for me. And I That's appreciate great. it. You're yeah. welcome. I'll, I'll share one little thing I told him for everyone. When you've got a confusion going on, which is all kinds of stuff spinning around and all things of plates in the air and all these balls, this whole concept of, you know, which I call uh, uh, mythology called multitasking and all the stuff is going on. You take one thing and you just finish it. So it's completely done. And that confusion will, to that degree, start to diminish that much, a tiny amount at first. The next thing takes more confusion out. You just keep finishing one thing at a time. And don't worry about all the rest of it. It will eventually get under control enough to where you can stop being so overwhelmed. But then what do you do when people keep calling you? Like, I'm trying to edit this podcast and Nathan keeps calling me. My clients keep calling me. And it's like, well, you can do what I'm doing right now. I'm glancing at these text messages and I'm answering the ones that I have time for. And right. after this is over, I'm going to finish answering the rest, but not right now. Right. Because I'm okay. busy. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Okay, okay, Maestro, more Space Command. Uh, I'm sorry, more Mr. sci Uh, No Anybody? questions right now. Okay. Very yeah. cool. So we can move our on. Next, uh, our next person up here is Sheila. Sheila Thompson, how are you? Unmute and speak. Are you there? Hi. Hey, there we go. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, I had a, a Sheila Thompson been with the table for maybe 10 years, uh, casting director. Most of you probably know me on the five uh, Christmas uh, parties we, we coordinated as a team. Uh, I have a big question. Um, I've been given the, the task of uh, directing a scene. Uh, it's called Squirrel. Some of you might know the the author. And I want to use um, Zoom to do it. Okay. Does anyone have any clues? Hi, Gino. Gino is part of my cast. Does anyone know how or any clever or anything I can go to see touch feel uh, in how to do it uh, to, you know, you have to be inventive. So I'm you want trying to use Zoom to what do you want to do exactly on Zoom? I want to direct a scene huh? using Zoom. How would you use Zoom the, to direct a scene? How would you do that? What do you think? Because I can't go and go and meet with the actors to, uh -huh. to, to do it. Oh, I get it. I have a friend who, who does dancing, and she teaches dance classes. We've had a couple of long discussions about this. You have to think about exactly what you want to have with that session. So you want to be able to have a two-way conversation with them be able to see what they're doing and give exactly. a comment to them and have them respond to what you said and change what they're doing. So you have to have two devices on we've there. We've got that going. Yeah. Yeah, one we've of got that going. One of the devices is the Zoom camera. And the other one is the camera that is shooting the scene. So they have to be rolling on that camera that's doing their take while you're watching on Zoom to give them notes. That's the trick. It takes two cameras on their end. I'm, I'm teaching on Zoom. I'm using it every day. And I'm teaching piano and voice. And especially on piano, I have to utilize multiple angles. That's right. So I have, I have, and what I did, if you can see right here, is actually an iPhone 6, um, 6S. And I've done a lot of research on this to make sure everything is uh, precise because uh, I charge quite a bit for my lessons. But the free Zoom only allows one-on-one -on -one interaction. I pay for the, it's $14, $15, it comes out a month, I pay for the upgraded Zoom. And I believe the first month is free or there's even a trial. So if you just start the trial the day before your shoot, 
um, you can do multiple. So with the $15 one, you can have like how we're having this meeting with a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Now in Zoom, I can toggle between multiple cameras. Um, like, so I, if you're on your phone, you cannot see this. You have to be on a computer. Mm -hmm. um, but I can click on this, this little part on the right corner where you can, um, it says spotlight, and that can shift for everyone to look at that one camera. So if that one camera is you, and then you can give them notes and say however, and then you can toggle back into another camera. So if you have another camera that is there, which the camera is linked to maybe a flat screen TV, because you can actually combine that, and then they can see real big image. So there's multiple ways of doing it. I've, I've got a lot of experience and I've done a lot of research on this and I can help you and walk you through this uh, step. Just send me an email at earlfsmith at gmail.com. Yeah. And uh, what is the, Yeah, I've done a lot of iPhone doing? Huh? What is the iPhone 6 doing? The, I, it's acting, I'm just utilizing that as this camera. The, what's great oh. about the phone is that it, it's 4K. So all yeah. these are 4K. Um, and I've looked at, okay, using a DSLR, because there's some people saying using a DSLR into, and then you've got to have a converter from um, the HDMI connection into the USB, which is very expensive. And I've, I've tried all these uh, different ways just to get what's the most precise and the most cheapest way is just using multiple cell phones. Um, yeah, right now... There's one thing I gotta jump in on about the cell phones and the concept of the 4K cell phones, especially the iPhones 11. Because I'm a cinematographer and I'm pretty technically minded. So I went to the Apple store and I asked them to get the pro out and some old dude came out and I said, I wanna ask you questions. I made him a list of a, a six or seven specific technical questions about shooting cinematically with an iPhone 11. He said, okay, this, 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 this. He told me exactly what the deal was. And the 4K of these phones is not really 4K. It's an right. iPhone version of 4K. Right. And it's nice and it looks good and on YouTube it's going to play amazing but if you start to get into other kinds of releases of the film you got to think about that too so that's a right. big part of it so Earl's research he's done here is awesome I've also done shoots where I've had to have someone film someone's got some music going on in their background there that's Faith playing the violin so oh, she's great. practicing that's awesome so I've shot things remote in other countries recently I shot someone for space command and we ended up using her ipad as the camera and our phones just with a voice only for the direction and right before we were ready to do the takes the service stopped working so she did the takes on her own on her ipad and sent the clips and we looked at them after the fact and gave her notes the next day so you got to do whatever you have to do to get it to work under these circumstances but the key is that the camera that actually films them is it the right kind of camera you want to use for your project? Because that's what's going to capture them. That's the biggest part of it. Totally agree. And I, I, I hope you didn't misunderstand me because I was not suggesting to you use your phone to shoot your, your scene. You can Just use, use your phone to shoot your scenes if it's the right phone for the right scene. Right. Yeah. I'm also using this connector so the, the iPhone that's connected for the camera so they can see you. Um, I'm. This is a USB to the little um, whatever. Forget the lightning. lightning port. And then this this portion here is Ethernet. Goes into the USB connection, and then power goes into this part. Okay. Connect directly, so you don't have a lag. But I am not. Uh, and 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 I will second Dev David Bartlett because I know David Bartlett, and he's amazing work and just as he says like unless you need that footage for the scene i wouldn't recommend to shoot your scene with the the iphone use some other camera in the room but do your directing and your talking via the zoom and use a good camera so they can see you really well and a lot of it's the lighting too the iphones look yeah. great they light them well you can shoot in 35 millimeter film with the same camera stanley kubrick used on the shining which i did once and the lighting could look horrible so it's, it's, that's a lot of it too. The camera's only going to get you so far if it doesn't look good. So you need a cinematographer to help you too if you can. That's an Quick important question. Anyway, uh, what what yeah. mic uh, are you using, Earl? 
the mic. What yeah. mic are you using, Earl? So I am. Um, this is an Elvis Presley mic. It's, uh, electric voice. DS35. But it's not the mic that's creating the, the quality. It's this mic is then plugged into a small mixer right here, which I can control the volume of. So I also have another mic in the back of my piano here where I teach, uh, which is a U47. So if I so so make sure good quality comes through because I'm teaching and I'm I, I, and this is what I do primarily for money. Um, but then this mixer then goes into this audio interface that is uh, Thunderbolt. It's 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 good quality, but I wouldn't. It's not to my professional standards because I'm using Pro Tools HD with the HD hardware uh, for my sound design and scoring and stuff. Yeah, these um, are all but, good questions that are much longer in depth answers. Than right. Send me an email. I'll walk you through it. I'll help you with it. Yeah, um, and David Bartlett, I'm sure you'll help too. Um, yeah, I'm happy yeah. to. That's at yeah. Earl F. Smith at gmail.com. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, if there's time in tonight's session, I'll do a sound portion of this too, but I want to make sure everyone cool. gets to talk. Cool. So, uh, any more Mr. Sci Fi's, Adam? Nope. We're good there. That's a negative ghostwriter. Okay. The pattern is Thank full. Thank you. Thank you, Sheila. Next up, the one and only Dave Edison. Well, well, hey everyone, um, and hi to the uh, Mr. Sci-Fi viewers. I've been um, working on Space Command at the computer above here, and uh, we're heading towards this uh, debut on Sunday at the Spacom Con uh, of the uh, episode called Ripple Effect, uh, shade under two hours. Uh, it's a, I've, you may have heard Mark talking about it even early on a couple of months ago. It was a small episode that was going to be real easy because the actors were going to shoot it on their own and there won't be any video effects to do. And 20 minutes, no it, visual effects. It, and if no we make it, use. and if we make it in time, we'll be lucky. Um, I just got some audio from, uh, from our sound designer. He was a great guy, and I just finished today swapping out uh, color comic book pages for the animatic part of the uh, the episode, which looked really great. And um, it's uh, it's coming together. Uh, David Bartlett's going to be handing over some uh, some color corrected footage. That's what they say. And um, and other than that, uh, I've got a few hey, other Dave. things. Yeah. Hey Dave, how long yes, is it yes, now? That's a rather personal. You, oh, the um, uh, I can actually uh, tell you that. Give me a second. It's um, <laughs> oh, I'll, tell, I'll give you it to the frame. One hundred and twelve minutes. It's, it's it's one hour fifty six minutes thirty two seconds and uh -huh. seven frames. There you go. So, so yeah, so it's it's just under two hours. So um, and it's a it's an unusual episode. I got to tell you, don't be expecting um, rocket ships and laser blasts and transporters. It's uh, it's it's much more personal. It's these little, um, it, it's a montage of little scenes. Um, some of them longer than others, uh, where our characters are talking about their background and really diving in a little bit to their um into their characters. So um, some great performances. And um, we'll, uh, we'll unspool it up for you on Sunday and see what you think. Very cool. Anything you need? Uh, no, other than that, just uh, let people know that uh, if uh, for you folks over on Mr. Sci-Fi, let me share this screen here. Oh, can you give me a screen share there, Adam? Are you able to turn that on? Can't hear you, Adam. Oh, it, okay. It should be good. All right. Um, if you if you folks haven't checked it out, you can um, you can take a look at my picture yes. book, "The Man with the List," 
as it says there, a picture book for grown-up skeptics, free thinkers, realists, doubters, questioners, agnostics, atheists, or anyone who can't believe in the unbelievable. And if that's your thing, you can check it out uh, either at Amazon or if you just want to watch it, uh, I've animated it and uh, and I read it for you on YouTube. So just go uh, to YouTube and punch in man with list picture and it'll come right up for you. So I, I hope you're all doing well. I'm sorry. So I personally give it a two thumbs up. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. I hope you're all doing well and you and yours are staying safe. Uh, wear those masks. Don't believe the nonsense. Believe the scientists. All right. Stay well. All right. See you Sunday. Right. Yeah. So, Adam, got any more? Mr. Sci-Fi's? Um, no, but a very nice comment from David Bass, who says, uh, considering the circumstances and the effort to put together Space Command, uh, to put together Space Command, it's fantastic. The series will hold up. It is YouTube gold in terms of content. <laughs> there you go. I, I agree cool. with Mr. Bass. Adam, can I? Uh, is there going to be an email going out as to where to go to the the function app? Oh, um, yeah, I'll put I'll put one out to the table. It's uh, on the Mr. Sci-Fi YouTube channel. Uh, okay. It, uh, I'll I'll send you I'll send the link out to the table. Thank you. Yeah. Very good. So Willow, you're up next. Oh, I went already. I actually jumped the line and <laughs> said my you. stuff earlier, so I'll pass. Thank you. You're okay? You're good to go? Um, yep, yep. I've been chatting with people privately. I'm all good. So, hey, yep. Hey, hey, Will, hey Willow. Oh. Oh, 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 Willow. Is um, Vintage America with Ginger screening anywhere at this point? Do we have that up anywhere? <laughs> yeah. Dave, I love you. Uh, I, I, I actually don't know. You keep changing... Uh, you know, you keep getting I don't, more people interested. No, in see, I'm adding things because I have my distro guy keeps adding more places that it can be seen. And Thank add, you, adding is good. Yes, adding is good. And actually, he gave me another one. And I don't want to keep making you upload the GD files. So I'm trying to avoid that, but it's it, it's a thing. Anyway, so we'll talk separately, but I don't want to bother you. But anyway, um, yes, it's on well, Amazon. Well, might, as well, might as well tell people who it is, Tell uh, what it is, tell the... Mr. Sci-Fi people, what they can watch and where? It's Vintage America with Ginger. Ginger is not here this evening, but she is the, the scintillating host of the show. It's We've got three episodes in the can. It's on uh, Amazon Prime for free if you have Amazon Prime. It's on Tubi. It's on a couple of other uh, uh, digital OTT networks uh, for your consumption and enjoyment. Um, it, what, what, what it, I can it? actually use help um, what, you know, what, actually getting it more seen. Oh, what's that, Dave? What, 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 what is it? What is it? <laughs> he says, um, it's hard to describe. It's, it's, it's um, exploring the world of vintage um, through, it's kind of almost like a magazine type show where we go have different segments and we'll visit um, somebody working on antique car, somebody working on, uh, you know, or, or running the, uh, the Cicada Club in downtown Los Angeles. We'll have different places that, that Ginger goes, and uh, we have an episode on vaudeville. I'm actually in that um, with uh, talking about old circus stuff from the, the turn of the century. Um, so it's, it's a, it's a lighthearted and, and uplifting and educational uh, show about the world of vintage and how people can still enjoy those same vintage things today, such as Bessemer Cosmetics in downtown Burbank, which has authentic uh, uh, colors of the, the 20s, 30s, 40s of, of makeup, and that kind of thing. So um, they're, only about, they're only about 21 minutes each, so they're yeah. easily digestible. Yeah, 22 to 25 minutes. Um, I got a guy laying on a bed of nails. What's not to like there? So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, so actually I can use better distribution. Um, we want to make more episodes. Ginger recently started doing a uh, radio show uh, as part, uh, um, one of the segments of The Price of Business, which is a syndicated uh, radio show uh, that goes out to I don't know, 88 million you know, households or something like that. Um, so we're still trying to make more episodes, but we kind of fall in the cracks. We can't go to your traditional uh, uh, um, reality show producers because, well, this isn't, you know, dramatic and sexy enough, so they don't want to buy us. And we can't go to scripted producers because it's not scripted. So we're kind of still falling in that crack. So if you know anyone who can help us out with um, 
you know, anything kind of PR, uh, distribution, funding, uh, uh, getting us in, in front of the right eyeballs, that would be a big help to, to that show in particular. Um, other than that, I'm working on the audio dramas for uh, Triune, uh, and uh, which is about three brothers who discover they're not quite as human as they thought. And um, I have a friend of mine who is the lead actress in the original Manos, The Hands of Fate, which some of you might be familiar with as one of the worst movies ever made. But she is, uh, we're kind of reimagining the, the Manos world and doing audio dramas because, you know, COVID. Um, so that's one of the things that, that we're working on is, is the audio dramas. Uh, and David Goldenholz is a freaking rock star. He's been messaging me and we're going to talk tomorrow on the phone about doing that. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> so um, unless there's any questions, I, I yield the remainder of my time. Great. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Thank you, Dave. And right, Dave. Now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave and Dave, Adam, the comedy team. Mr. sci -Fi's? Um. Yeah, we have another question from uh, Rose Kirby, who's asking about uh, if you could put the running order on Instagram, which I'm assuming is the the schedule for the Space Command convention. And I think, and yes, we will. And I do want to mention to those of you watching, Mr. Sci-Fi, if you don't already follow us on Instagram, uh, please do. It's Space Command series. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and put that in the chat as well. That's great. Uh, Great. But yeah, yeah we should do that. We should put that out in the in the order. We'll As it gets more finalized, we've got a lot of it finalized, but we still, we've got the slots picked, but not everyone is confirmed for certain things. So we'll right. As we, we'll as we they that. confirm, we'll yeah. And leave the slot empty, say you know TBD or whatever. Correct. Great. Okay. Cool. So let's move on to Mr. Earl F. Smith. Hey, hey, everybody, Earl F. Smith. I am a sound designer, sound editor, composer, multi-award winning. Uh, excuse my daughter, I told her to go practice. She's uh, in the works of climbing up her ladder. Is she in Space Command or is it uh, Twinkle and... Uh, she uh, is in, is... Yeah, she's in the new cut of Ripple Effect and, Ripple uh, effect. and uh, she's got uh, just a Got a little couple little shining moments there. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So thank she's you. Uh, extremely excited about that. Uh, I did bought a green screen and did the whole learning curve and lighting the green screen correctly. Uh, and and I'm I'm not uh, per se a filmmaker in that regard. I deal with sound primarily. Uh, the green screen came out fine. That was uh, really easy to work with, and she's. Uh, we put her in in a, a in a nice house, watching a vintage TV uh, of a uh, of a sci-fi icon. Awesome. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. So Earl, I, I hate to break this to you, but that makes you a filmmaker. <laughs> well, that leading on to the next thing, um, I, I it's been different. It's been different for me since I've moved to Sacramento County, um, and I've. I, been working on lots of films before I moved here and since I moved here the first year I really didn't tell anybody that I moved and because of the fact that in LA it was like that past year had worked on maybe 20-25 films and I met with a director once so I decided well if I move how's anyone going to know and um, so but I've, I'm getting to the point now where I'm starting to not want to just take any and everything, and especially those that don't have a certain level of appreciation if you're doing them a favor, and start to focus more on quality and building a team. Mark mentioned that. Uh, Dave, Dave uh, Bartlett, he's mentioned that to me. Huh? Um, and so I've been taking that on. And one of the things that's got me thinking, well, what if I get involved in the films and I'm also a producer? Um, I'm very good at pulling people together and, and kind of also reminding people to the, the final, you know, what's the, what's the point? What is, you're making the film, what is the point? You know, where is this going to go? What is this going to do to climb your career and for you as an individual and for everyone as a team? So I've been exploring that as a, you know, producing per se. So that's something I'm going to be looking to do. And I've been contacting a couple of um, people who write scripts and then trying to decide 
um, the best angle and the best way to go about that. And uh, I think also in that regard, if I'm pulling in money and I am also putting my mo own money in, in the plate, I can have a little bit more say on the music per se. Um, that's true. That's very true. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. Um, um, I would say right now I don't really need much. Um, but yeah. Okay. Great. Thanks a lot. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Uh, should we move on or do we have another Mr. Sci-Fi? No, we can move on. I got okay. one thing I forgot. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. Go one ahead. thing I also decided to do, um, because I'm a singer, I'm a, I play piano, I play a lot of instruments, actually. Um, I stumbled on a composer who he's putting out his own personal music, and from that he got a, he started, people started reaching out to him to score their films. Uh, so I started doing that, and I did, uh, a week and a half ago, I recorded Bridge Over Troubled Waters, me playing the piano. And I'm so excited, because it's been a week and a half. I've put it on YouTube. I'm already at 1,200 views. And it's the first video. And I'm going to try to do one every two weeks or so and, and, and just keep it constant, keep it coming out. Um, so I'm going to post that in the in, on the table, and you look out for that, share, and if you like it, give it a thumbs up, and so but, forth. So the Mr. For the Mr. Sci-Fi people, where do we find that on YouTube? Well, Listen. it's not on. It's I haven't posted on YouTube yet. I thought it'd be better. I pull ah. ten so I can release one a week. But you can find it on my Instagram, which is Earl F. Smith, which is public. You can find it on my Facebook, which is also Earl F. Smith. It's also public there as well. It's on Facebook where I have the most views, most comments, and the most shares. Um, but yeah, Earl F. Smith. Very cool. Thank you, Thank Earl. You. Thank you. Okay, good. So, Adam, should we move on or what? Uh, yeah, still no more questions. Still no questions yet. All right. So, guess who's next? Gino. Gino. You know the man. Gino, who lurks around the corners of the table when it's at three counters, but he can't hide here. <laughs> <laughs> Copy that. I uh, forgot about this till the last minute. Oh, uh, that wonderful microphone, too. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for the introduction, Jay. Yeah, we lost your mic. Yeah. Your mic's super low now. What? Your microphone. That's because it's on top of your head. You need yeah, to bring imagine it down. that. Imagine that. There, there you go. <laughs> the wonders of the table. There you go. Hey, Extra ancillary benefits. Um, wow, we just down to 12. Hi, right, Gino. Um, uh, actor, filmmaker, comedian. Uh, let's see. I had another good set last night. Um, also going to be reaching out to uh, to you guys with regards to a Zoom project that I've got going myself. Uh, it's also really good to have Sheila here tonight and be part of her uh, uh, piece coming up. Um, also, Dave, the, that's... Well, that's at least all, all that I can think of on in that regard. But Dave, you mentioned one thing, and I've actually been trained on this before in terms of with all the stuff that I got going on, just you know, completing one thing and then, you know, going to the next and um, that opening up possibilities as well as stuff, you know, that I may not even be looking to have, hap have happen or have things fall in place. But one thing that was on my mind is heavy today. Um, coming out of some really concentrated work that I was doing. The bottom line is, uh, can you or anybody give me f suggestions or where to look to? Um, I, I, I need to get some steady income. And naturally, I'd love to have it, you know, in, in the business. Uh, but when that, when I don't have that, it really takes me out. Um, I'm good at a lot of stuff and some stuff I'm cutting back on, but, and I've never gone on that, that table portion of where it's just uh, the life portion. So you might, you might want to start there, you know, I mean, you'd have to let people know it, the, the whole thing about financing is all about communication. Money itself is a communication. It is a flow. It goes one way and it comes back the other way. So you're going to put out there in the world, what you can offer them to make them money and they're going to give you money for it 
So what is it that you have that you can offer for them that they would pay you for? Then you'll know what to promote. Otherwise, what are you promoting? I wouldn't know how to start helping you. Well, I've had me longer than I, I've been in food service longer than I care to say. Well, okay. uh, um, team plus years. Sure. Um, background stuff. Um, and actually both, well, both of those are, have been shut down. Um, so you'd have to know how much you need. You have a budget that's really precise on paper. Cause you know, I'm not even sure I have a budget that's precise on paper, frankly, and I could probably use one, but people don't do that. They just put it, pour it in as they go. They say, oh, I have a bill, I'll pay it, you know? So do you know exactly how much you need to cover those expenses that you want? And are those jobs gonna get that for you? And I would start with those kinds of questions. These are rudimentary, simple questions that a lot of people overlook and they just let it go, and myself included. You know, like, do you balance your checkbook? You know, I see how much is in my account and see if I need to pay a bill with it. That's not balancing your checkbook. So I'm bad about that too, myself. So you've gotta have an exact target in mind, what it is you're gonna go after. And then you can ask people if you can work with them to get that money. Does that make sense? Totally. So totally. if you don't wanna be in food service and you can't be, and you don't wanna be in extra work and you can't be atmosphere or whatever, okay, that's fine. So what can you do that will get you that money that you need, but you have to know, of course, first, how much it is you need. Okay. It's like sort of, you know, I wanna to go to the store and get some food. Okay, what are you gonna get? You go, you you go get to... like 10 gallons of milk. I don't need 10 gallons of milk. Well, you didn't say you didn't need 10 gallons of milk. You need to get some food. No, you go to the store and you get some cottage cheese and you eat some of the cottage cheese. You know what I'm saying? It's like, okay. it's an obvious thing, but that's the way it works in all aspects of finances. You know, to get specific about it can really be helpful, especially if you're making a movie or a TV show. How much do you need to have? Well, what do you want to have first? Then you know how much you need to have. Then you know how much to ask for. So, you know, it's like, do you need 10 million or do you need 100,000? That's a different ask. <laughs> right, most okay. definitely. Okay. So you're, you're in the same situation now with your day-to-day -day living expenses as someone that's raising money to make a movie. It's not, There's no difference. Right. Let me, I don't know how many people are, uh, are thinking this. And I know just living in L.A., this is, it can be so common that you think that the rest of the world is like what your experience is in L.A. And when I moved from L.A. to Folsom, I live in Folsom, which is the far east side of Sacramento County. The next city over is El Dorado Hills, which is like Bel Air. El Dorado County, Tahoe is in El Dorado County. There has been no deaths on the coronavirus, not one. There's been less than 100 people even catch the case. Um, even all Sacramento County, there's been, I, I think, a total of 28 deaths. But, you know, we still go through the whole shutdown here, but it's less. El Dorado County says we had enough. They filed a lawsuit on the governor. We want to open. So they're like in stage three right now. And this is where my studio is. So I have people coming in in person. Now, I'm mentioning this is that. I know if I was still in L.A., I would be so screwed right now. But knowing what I know now is you don't have to stay there. You can go somewhere else where it's not affected and do things. Get a regular job, maybe do a shared room, pay your bills and get through that, get through the situation. So these are just suggestions that that I thought of because I, you know, I got a kid. I'm a single parent. I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to do whatever I got to do to take care of my kid. Um, but this is something I thought of that I would do um, is move out of your circumstance because I know L.A. and L.A. is going to get worse as the numbers climb up. And shutdown in L.A. happened three weeks after shutdown happened up here. Um, but the world is different outside of the county. And if you explore outside of the county, you might find that you have a lot more options. Also up here, there's a lot of job opportunities that pay more than what you averagely would get in L.A. I'm so shocked on that. Teaching lessons, I'm charging more up here than I was in L.A. Wow. And I'm get, and up here, it's been, I've done no advertising before the shutdown at 42 students. Right now I have 31. 
and I've done no advertising. It's just a different world outside of LA. I'm still in culture shocks, almost three yeah, years. Um, and it's not that far away. I've I've done quite a few things on Space Command. They need me, I drive down. It, it's been as simple as that for me. Uh, but just as some ideas to try to help, because I, I I totally get it. You know the fear, and then when you you have a call out, I need help. Um, this may be a place to to look look sure. outside of LA County and see what you might discover. Those are good ideas. So again, you're looking outside of LA County for what? So we're back to that again. You still have to know what you're asking for, what you can offer. But looking into an area that has those things to offer outside of LA County is an interesting idea. Yeah. So anything else you need? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Earl. I appreciate all that, buddy. I actually right. have a question for you, Gino. Yeah. Um, uh, so you're a comedian. You're a comedian. Have you done any Zoom? Because uh, I know there's been Zoom uh, stand up. Uh, have you done any of that? Yeah, I'm on one uh, every every week. That's the one that I was referring to last night. Yeah. Uh, it's like it's an improv type deal where. Uh, we pull a topic out of a bucket and then you riff on it. Everybody how, gets five minutes. I just can't fathom how you can, uh, how one can do that because there's so little, like, how do you tell, how can you tell if the audience is laughing or, you know, how, how can you tell whether you're bombing or doing great? Right. Um, well, when I first started, when we were at a location, um, yeah, I, I gauged all of it by the laughs and being that I was always being there, you know, pretty much, well, last for the most part, just like coming here. <laughs> and, but, you know, when, when I did check in with other people, they said, oh, no, no, it was good. It was good. And and the times when I've got both, I'm, I'm feeling really good about that. Um, and since it's been just virtual, it is just been just the comedians, but no audience. And I have had them going, you know, quite a bit, you know, laughing and, and whatnot and told by the reactions. Cool. Thank and you. Yeah, absolutely. That's fascinating. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Thank you, Gino. Thank you, guys. All right. Any other, is, is Mr. Uh, No, still no questions, uh, but we do have a shout out to Robbie Riley Esquire, who's tuning in from Tokyo. Uh, so shout out to him. Wow, that's Thanks very cool. Us. All right, so is Carmi interested in talking here? Carmi, Carmi, Carmi. Hi, no, I'm not. Hey. I just was interested in tuning in, but thank okay. you. All right, fine. Uh, that leaves me next with Judith Smiley. Judith. That mic is muted, darling. Yeah, you're... At least you're right side up today. We got that going for us. Uh, Can't hear you. Cannot hear you. Not at all. <laughs> there you and go. I've got a beautiful ah. Space Command watch. Yeah, so we just started hearing you. What else did you say? I said I had was in Pico Rivera all afternoon. I had a great time. And I got a, I got a Space Command watch. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank um, you. Um, just working on all my projects. You know, um, I've got the doggies. So my attention's a little diverted. They're sitting there. They're standing there waiting for me to feed them. <laughs> They're like, uh, they like, they like feeding. They like feeding and, and playing and petting and they've got to go out. Um, but I had a good day today. It was fun. Um, and I'm looking forward to Sunday. Good. And, and then um, I would like to see what part of Space Command I can use for my demo because I'm really focused on that. I want to do that in August because my roommate will be gone. Thank God. And um, the house will be free of all his shit. Uh, and that will be a good Family thing. Show. Family show. You never heard those words before, right? Oh, I've heard them, um, just not on this show. Oh, well, I have a potty <laughs> mouth, sorry. Okay. Um, and that's about it. Oh, hello, Adam. I've, I just saw him. I, I've heard of you. Um, that's about it, really. I've just been 
working on stuff. Um, and that's it, really. I don't need anything except money, as we all do. And okay. um, just enjoying being part of the table. Oh, my God, it was so good to get out. I feel like I would let out of Pelican Bay. Yeah. Thank you uh, for helping out. She came into the studio to help out with a mask and everything. It was great. Uh, anytime. You know that. Anytime. I've told you that time and time again. Anytime. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you, Judith. So, any more, uh, uh, Mr. Zypheis? Uh, no more questions, but uh, I can go if you want. That leaves us with you. Yeah. With me, silly old me. Because uh, we reserve the, wonderf the wonderful me for Mark Zicky. <laughs> right. Uh, so, I'm Adam Sartain, as I've said earlier. I am an actor, a voice actor with, uh, I think, near nearly 80 voices that I can, voices, accents, and impersonations I can do. Um, and I am a musician. I play the tuba. Uh, uh, shout out to Earl. I'm actually, uh, Sacramento is my hometown, so I know exactly, uh, exactly what you're talking about. The full, I know exactly where I've been to Folsom many times. Uh, I shot, I did my first feature movie, um, an independent movie in El Dorado Hills, um, was called Charlie's Closet. Uh, interesting movie. I won't get uh, too far into it, but you can look it up on, um, on IMDb. It's in my IMDb. Uh, speaking of which, I just uh, renewed, I just got back on IMDb Pro. Uh, just so people can see my face. Because <laughs> if you're not on IMDb Pro, you can't upload a picture of yourself. Um, and uh, I auditioned for The Voice on NBC today, and I didn't get it. <laughs> well, poo-poo to them. I know. If they, you know, I can sing pretty well. I think it might have been my song choice, because I chose a Frank Sinatra song, which is kind of old, and they tend towards the current pop culture song. So I guess because I didn't sing a Cardi B tune, <laughs> I didn't get picked. But can I offer you a hint, Adam? A as, things. Adam, can I offer you a hint as someone who's had a long career in musical theater? Please do. Don't audition with a song that is a trademark for somebody else. Because ah, comparisons are odious. That's true. Especially Frank Sinatra. Yeah. But I sang like Frank Sinatra. I can sing. Do, yeah. I sing like Frank Sinatra. They're comparing all like, the way. You and your mother yeah. might be the only ones that think that. Yeah. Like I've had other people. I've had other people say that it's very. It's spot on. What uh, song? Did and, you sing? What song? Uh, did you fly, sing? Fly me, to, fly me the to the moon. It's gorgeous. That's the one. That's yeah. the it's gorgeous. And let me play among the stars. Okay, okay. You know, it's so, like, but I can also sing like uh, Louis Armstrong. That's a whole other thing. But uh, okay. moving on, <laughs> I actually once got a tip uh, singing karaoke. Someone handed me a dollar after I sing What a Wonderful World. <laughs> but that's another wow. story. So um, that's cool. Anything else about uh, you and your life and what's happening before we go on to another question I have? Uh, I have a um, I have a table read tomorrow, a second table read uh, for a animated movie um, that a friend of mine wrote and is uh, directing and uh, doing voices in called Diamond Dragons. Uh, it's he's still looking for he's still looking to sell it to get it get it going but um, I'm doing a couple different character voices in it and uh, we did a table read uh, last month um, of the first 30 pages or so and then we're doing the next 30 pages uh, tomorrow and then the rest of my time is taken up by Space Command. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we're going to be pretty busy Sunday and tomorrow. Yes. Okay, good. That's great. Thank you, Adam. That's me. So I think 
that's everyone that's on here. And I guess the last one up here is me. I've done a lot of talking, but uh, I'm excited about this this film, uh, the Jimmy Walden film. I am the flag starring Jimmy Walden. I'm very happy with how successful that's been. If you guys want to subscribe, I want to try to get the subscriptions up so that Jimmy can start getting some uh, money back, which would be nice because he's 96. And he was, uh, among other things, in Patton's Third Army and helped liberate the Buchenwald concentration camp. So, and he was the voice of Yaki Doodle Duck and Yogi Bear. So he's a pretty cool guy and I'd love to help him more. Um, Space Command conference happening on Sunday. I will be producing along with Adam as the IT and general all around good guy. And Mark will be moderating for lots of hours, six full hours of moderating. And we're gonna add little things in here and there, little little uh, Easter eggs and little surprises and whatnot. And uh, next week I'm doing a lot of painting. If you need something to do and you have nothing else to do, I can provide you with masks and brushes and you can paint to your heart's content. Absolutely. And, uh, uh, I never quite, well, if we could do a little bit about the sound of the videos that you guys might be shooting. Um, I'll give you some like real basic rudimentary sound advice about certain things. There's two types of sound in any given room. One is the kind of sound that comes in from the outside or is transmitted from the inside to the outside. And that's called soundproofing. Okay, and you really need to be in a room that's soundproof to get that effect. It's very hard to soundproof a room that's not built that way. But the other one is reflection, which is like a mirror reflects light. Sound bounces off of a hard surface and comes back. And that's that sort of reverby kind of slappy sound that makes your voice sound like it's in a bathroom. So if you put up drapes and whatnot to help protect that room from having the sound reverberate environment, you're already well on the way to good sound. And the next is to get the microphone close to your mouth because it has a harder time to get to those walls and back if it's close. You can take a $10,000 microphone and set it 15 feet away from you and have it sound terrible. You can take a $300 microphone and set it at six inches from you and have it sound beautiful. So mic placement, is more important than mic quality. That's one of my little phrases. So that doesn't mean you shouldn't spend money on the mic because you should, but you don't have to spend that much. So then there's the, the directional mic versus the lavalier mic. Those are the two people you use. Both are acceptable for different applications, but if you have those on to the actor- What, the now stop it. Or the camera. Stop it. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, you weren't telling me that, Judith? I think she was talking to her cat. <laughs> no, she was talking to the two dogs. Yeah. Those dogs, by the way, are Mark and Elaine's dogs. If you watch Ripple Effect this Sunday, you'll see them in action with me in a scene. And it's uh, it's really one for the books. So anyway, the two microphone types that people are the most commonly used is the directional mic and the lavalier mic. And there's a lot more technical descriptions to those mics than I have time for here. But if you use those in conjunction with the drapes in your room, then you'll be well off to the races of having good sound. And that's the thing that will stand out the most in your video is because it will make your film look like a student film. In other words, people that can't get their sound under control on the set, they'll have beautiful cinematography and you can't understand the words. And that's a big problem. So that's my little primer on sound. Earl can hip hop on that and go much farther than I did. You can email him. Uh, there are other people that know about these sorts of things. But uh, I did that for a long time. And it's a simple thing to fix and to do correctly, or at least improve yourself. You just like, you know, imagine that you're in an empty bank vault that has six parallel concrete surfaces, okay? Which I was in once. And you could, you could put your foot on the floor like that and the reverberant echo from that would last for about 10 seconds. And then you could be in a room that's completely surrounded by carpets and, and draperies and you can clap your hands and hardly hear it because the sound is not coming back. So those are the two extremes. Anyway, uh, if any of you have seen the David Bowie album cover, Station to Station, where he's got that strange look on his face and he's looking into a room that's got these cones pointing at him. You guys will check it out, Google it. That is an anechoic chamber, which is 98% reduced reflection of sound. It's the highest possible. They use it for testing equipment. And he had his picture taken in one of those for his album cover. So you can check that out. Anyway, if I, if I say something just real yeah. quick, and if that's something you want that echo long, it's better to add that in post because you can control it. 
than to go find a place that has that and record your audio there and be stuck with it. Yeah, you got to have a real master recordist record that reverberant sound in the environment. And you can do it, but it's got to be done really correctly. And, I, and I've done that too. I did that in that bank vault. I had a microphone on the guitar and one in the corner of the room and I played four or five pieces and it was an amazing effect. But it was, I mean, if you got anywhere away from that guitar, you were drowning in that reverb sound. So, you know, you got to watch it for that one. So anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, don't want to take too much time, but I uh, will say it's definitely different um, musicians versus filmmakers when it comes to uh, uh, sound uh, and uh, audio s stuff. So, like I worked for an orchestra once and uh, you know, location scouting, we would do the clap test to see uh, if it had good reverb. If it didn't, then, you know, it would be a different thing than if it, and if it did had good reverb or bad re reverb. Sure. Or, you know, yeah. So there's a bunch of cool YouTube clips on if you're Led Zeppelin fans, the placement of John Bonham's drums for Led Zeppelin IV. There's a lot of controversy and discussion about that. It's crazy how this goes on and on, but apparently they accidentally set it up in the lobby area of the mansion that they were in and he's played it and randomly they liked the sound and that's how they got that unique drum sound that everyone raves about so watch the videos decide for yourself but that choosing the ambient environment is a very very important thing for both applications of music recording and filmmaking as well so anyway um i think unless there are any more questions i think we've just about done it for tonight yeah, i want to thank you all for tuning in and listening to me and helping me get through this and I had a great time and uh, I would do it again. So there you are. Nicely Thanks, done. Guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night, everyone. Bye. Next week. Bye. Stay, Stay safe, safe, everyone. You're Stay welcome, folks. Bye. 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 All right. All right. Goodbye, everyone. It'll Good night. Good night.